to 50 more. I'm Doug Brown. There were two games in Seoul last week, but today is baseball's opening day. Right now, the Orioles lead the Angels 5-1 to one in the second. ESPN has learned Rays shortstop Wander Franco will be on paid administrative leave until June 1st. An investigation continues into Franco's alleged sexual relationship with a 14-year-old girl. Franco is still in the Dominican Republic and has not been charged. The Sweet 16 tips off tonight in Boston and Los Angeles on the 32nd anniversary of his buzzer beater for Duke to beat Kentucky. Christian Leitner believes UConn is the best team again. They seem to be a little old schoolish. They slow down at times. They pass ahead and they can play fast and fast break. They still shoot their three-pointers. But, man, they're the best team in college basketball last year. And this year, they look really, really good. Christian Leitner on Greeny. Hornets guard LaMelo Ball will miss the rest of the season with that right ankle injury. He's been out for the last two months. He's played only 58 games the last two seasons. Hey, it's Michelle Smallman. Coming up Friday, I'll give you my biggest takeaways from baseball's opening day. It's Unsportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR. I'm Matt. You're a loser, Matt. Hey, shut up, kid. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm, you so. And Mr. Toby Tomblin. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Man, we got a ton to do. John Neighbors talking some hogs baseball. In about 15 minutes from right now, uh, Mincy's here in hour three. It is opening day of the Major League Baseball season, so Muse, Paulie, and I will give you our sure-to-go-wrong MLB division winner picks and World Series picks. That's coming up next hour, but let us begin as we do every single day. It's time to pop the top on another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. So we know that... Uh, Wednesday was pro day out at LSU, and of course the the show stopper was Malik Neighbors, and everybody wanted to see Jaden Daniels naturally as well. Jaden didn't run the forty, but he threw about fifty passes, and by all accounts, it went very well for Jaden Daniels, who um uh, who asserted himself well throughout the day, and all the guys that went and participated looked like they had a fantastic day. None better than Malik Neighbors, obviously ran a four three five in the forty forty two inch vertical and is uh, solidifying himself at or at the top of everybody's receiver draft boards. Uh, Brian Kelly met with reporters there at LSU Football Media Day, or excuse me, at Pro Day um, afterwards, and he gave sort of the standard Pat generic answer that you give about what having a Pro Day like that means for your program. First of all, you know, we had... You know, a lot of national television here, the NFL Network, ESPN, obviously getting that kind of notoriety for LSU and for the football program certainly is very good for your program and how you move forward relative to the recruiting. And certainly for our young guys, they get a chance to see what it's like. It's a job interview in many ways and and how you need to prepare, you know, for that job interview. And I think our guys did a great job preparing for that job interview today. They get a chance to see that. And then I think finally, the entire country got a chance to see elite players and what that looks like. And LSU has done a great job over the years of developing elite players. I don't think there's any debating any of that. Um, It was, by all accounts, a great day for for these young guys. We wish them well as they move toward their draft dreams. And we'll 
cover that plenty between now and obviously what we're going to see uh, in April with the NFL draft. And we're expecting Jaden Daniels to go uh, somewhere in the top three picks and you know, Malik Neighbors potentially be the number one uh, receiver off the board and Brian Thomas will be a first rounder. And a lot of guys are going to make their dreams come true. Um, the other thing, though, that Brian Kelly said that for me I thought was uh, – maybe the most noteworthy, was when he was asked about NIL. And it, specifically through the lens of if NIL has helped keep underclassmen out of the draft and in school longer. Here's what Brian Kelly said. There's a wide variance there. You, you bring up Malik Neighbors and, and Brian Thomas. You know, those guys are first round draft picks, right? So you're talking about signing bonuses that are, you know, upwards of $15 million. NIL is not going to keep you in school for that. But, you know, I, I think it can influence those guys that are on the fence relative to, you know, are you a fourth or a fifth round draft pick or even free agents? NIL can certainly, I think, make a difference there. So yes, in answering your question, I think NIL has, has helped lessen the burden of deciding, hey, I need to go to the NFL. I need to make money because NIL is helping me and making it easier for me to be a student athlete. For people that have uh, sort of vilified NIL, that is one positive, one undeniable positive. And the interesting thing is 10 years ago, the conversation had become about all these greedy players that leave early for the draft and what are you doing and why aren't you coming back? Well, now that conversation is shifting because more guys are staying in school. Now, I told you this around the draft declaration date, but there are two players in particular that LSU's collective offered half a million dollars to stay. And I do not mind saying that on the record. Mason Smith and Makai Wingo were both offered half a million dollar NIL opportunities to return in 2024 and both decided to go pro anyway. Now, the caveat with Mason Smith is, had the Bo Davis hire already happened, and maybe Wingo as well, then maybe both stay. But at that point, you didn't know who the defensive line coach was going to be. They declared, and then the next week is when LSU hired Bo Davis, and then it was kind of hard to put the, the toothpaste back in the tube. But anyway, so just for the record, LSU did, the, the collective did have a, a half a million dollar offer on the table for each of those players to return, and they did. But undeniably, that situation of players on the fence making the decision to go instead of stay has become the exception, not the rule. I told you I was going to illustrate this point. And this proves Brian Kelly's uh, point there. LSU, despite their early entrance, excuse me, college football had 58 players declare early for this year's NFL draft. 58. That is the fewest number of underclassmen declaring for the draft since the 2011 draft. Do you remember what happened in 2011? I don't know if you remember. 2011 is when the NFL approved its its collective bargaining agreement there before the 2011 season. So if you're following me, this was the draft after the 2010 season, so the 2011 draft, and then that ha happens, and then that summer, the summer of 2011, remember there was the, the holdout where it, Drew Brees was getting guys together to work out while there was the lockout? Um, when that new CBA was approved, they capped rookie deals. Remember, you... You used to have draft picks hold out to get more money. I mean, Jamarcus got a $60 million contract without ever taking a snap. So the veterans at the new CBA said, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to cap rookie deals and increase things like veteran minimums and so on. So they changed the pay structure of the NFL. And so a lot of guys decided at that point, well, like what's, you know, what do you – What's the point in 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 leaving if rookie deals are capped? Or actually what happened, and you start to see the escalation, is guys said, 
unless if I'm going to be a top 10 pick or whatever, I got to get to my second contract because that's only when I'm really going to make money. So guys said, look, even if I'm a second round pick, they don't have my fifth year option. After year four, I'm a free agent or before my fourth year. So I'm three years away from a new deal. Let me start my clock ticking toward my, my second contract. So that's when you started to see the number of underclassmen dramatically increase. Um, if you're if you're watching, not listening, I'll show you this this chart. But this is a chart that tracks the number of underclassmen that declared for the draft from 2004 up into this year. And what you saw from 04 to 11 was pretty steady. And after 2011 with the new CBA is when you saw it this this run up. And 2021 was an all time high number of underclassmen. And obviously the 2021 draft. And obviously since then you've had NIL. And each year, 22, you saw a dramatic drop-off, and you've seen it stair-step stair down ever since, back to pre-2011 levels. I mean, 58 underclassmen declaring for the draft. There is no other plausible explanation other than NIL. I mean, you can look at that and say, man, what, what happened in 2022 after this run-up for a decade of just upward number of players leaving early, and then boom, it fell off a cliff. What happened? Well, NIL happened. So yes, it, it NIL is allowing for more players to stay in school longer. So Brian Kelly is right. Now, there are going to be exceptions. And if you're Malik Neighbors or if you're Jaden Daniels or Brian Thomas and you're going to be a first-round pick and you know you're going to go you know, make you know, seven, eight figures in a signing bonus immediately whenever you get drafted, then yeah, of course they're going to leave. But those players on the fence now have more of incentive to say, Look, I can go be a mid-round pick or an undrafted free agent and try to make a team, or I can come back to school for another year, make six figures, maybe even more, finish my degree, put more good tape out there, or transfer to, look at Gio Paez, who was on the show with us yesterday, transfer to a school that's going to show off my skill set more. Braden Fisk is a great example of this. Braden Fisk, great defensive lineman from Western Michigan, leaves, spends a year at Florida State, blows up. Now he's a fringe first-round pick. So the opportunity, because of NIL and the portal, for players staying in school is far greater than it ever has been before. And that is a benefit to the college game. It's the, it's the antithesis of what's happening in college basketball, where you have the one and done, and you, it's, it's just impossible to generate any type of consistency. Well, college football, you're getting the best players that are staying I should say the best players, but you're getting a lot of talented players and veteran players staying in the sport. It's a very good thing for the health of college football. A story that's not told enough. Okay, uh, it's after further review. We're glad you're with us. Our show open is brought to you by Bud Light. Drink easy in Louisiana with the great taste of Bud Light, the official beer of AFR. Uh, Easter's almost here. You know a lot of y'all are going to be having crawfish boils. You're going to be having your crawfish boil. Make sure you got an ice chest full of ice-cold Bud Light. Cheers to the champs. You can still find those purple aluminum uh, bottles celebrating the LSU Women's Basketball National Championship team. We salute Kim Mulkey and the squad, uh, obviously, as they uh, enter the Sweet 16 this weekend, trying to make a run to back-to-back -to -back titles. And, of course, the defending champ baseball team, they're uh, on the diamond tonight against Arkansas. You're going to be watching the Tigers. Make sure you got the official beer of the Tigers in your hand. Plenty of ice-cold Bud Light, the official beer of AFR. Okay, let me knock out a quick break. We'll come back. John Neighbors will be with us. We'll talk LSU, Arkansas. Get a preview of the number one hogs as LSU heads to Baum Walker for 6 o'clock first pitch tonight. Stick around. It's AFR. AFR. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. 
Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. After further review with Matt Moscona. Uh, I think they're really talented. I mean, you look at talent on that team, it's as good as anybody in the country. And and they know that, we know that, and everybody that plays them knows that. It's, uh, you know, really, uh, obviously our focus is to just do what we can do and do it well and, you know, control what we can control. But they're, uh, they're awfully good. It's Dave Van Horn talking about LSU. Big challenge for the Tigers. They head up to Baum Walker to take on the Hogs. Three-game series begins tonight. LSU will see Hagan Smith. We don't know who LSU is going to throw just yet. Our buddy John Neighbors hosts the John Neighbors Show. He's on Twitter at John Neighbors Show. If you want to give him a follow, join us now. John, how are you, man? Man, I am rolling. About to do my own little live show in a local watering hole here in the Fayetteville area. Getting ready to get some great baseball tonight, man. And hopefully uh, they don't disappoint like Football and basketball done for Arkansas so far this year. So, well, here's hoping. Uh, well, I would love to see Hagen Smith disappoint tonight. That would be great timing <laughs> for him to be uh, to pick an opportunity to be awful. But I don't know that we're going to see him be awful because he's really good. Give me some context for a program that's had, I mean, we could list a whole bunch of names, but some awesome arms come through there in the Dave Van Horn era. Give me some context on how good Hagen Smith has been to start this season. I, I mean, we all knew here and, of course, Arkansas and uh, nationally with college baseball that Hagan Smith was going to be uh, one of the best pitchers in the game. I mean, he's preseason All-American by most people's accounts. And I think everybody was expecting a big year and him to be really solid. But to do what he's done so far this year has been nothing short of incredible. I mean, you've had you know, guys like you mentioned, there's so many names to name of some dominant pitchers. But when you have a guy like Hagan, who not only has been getting double-digit strikeouts each and every outing that he's had in five or six innings, 
But the most impressive thing was down in Arlington when they went up against Oregon State, where Oregon State is an offensive juggernaut, one of the top teams in the country. And he went through six innings and struck out 17 guys. And it wasn't because of calls. They were striking out swinging. And that's when they could really woke people up. I'm like, okay, this guy might be on another level good. And he's just continued it on, man. I, I mean, he, in a lot of people's minds, you know, he's on pace. To, if he keeps doing what he's doing, he might be Golden Spikes winner running away. Uh, but it, it gives confidence. Dave Van Horn gets confidence to Hawkins that they feel like not many game ones and series and even in the SEC they feel like they're going to win each and every game when you got an arm like that to back you up and uh, having an offense that's starting to get going a little bit more here recently. Yeah, Hagen Smith has struck out 62 of the 109 batters he's faced this year. That's that's stupid. I mean, that's that's kind of like what we saw with Paul Skeens a year ago when you're striking out more than mm -hmm. two batters per inning on average. I know it's blasphemy to people here, and I'm not saying Hagen Smith is, is Paul Skeens, but he's the strikeout numbers are are, are pacing that way right now. Um, where is, uh, where is the kryptonite there, um, uh, with Superman? Well, I, you know, it's funny because it, the very first inning that he pitched this season and it was a cold game and the early part against, uh, a team in, I believe it was Kent state, but his very first inning, he, hit, he had a home run hit on him. He pitched 56 pitches in the first inning, could not get out, gave up a bomb. Like it was just really weird and shaky. And so people thought that, okay, well maybe it's, it's going to be a problem here. Well, then he just settled in. And, it, and it's as weird as it is, Matt, and not every game, but almost in most of his games that he's pitched, in the first inning, he's had some hits given up. He's had some you know, uh, home runs given up, and he just settles in. And I think that, that everyone feels like, okay, at some point in time, someone's going to get to him, and someone's going to kind of rattle a little bit in that first inning to where it could change some things. So it, it, as weird as it is, it's like the weakness might be just him – getting out there and starting, mm. but if he doesn't settle in, uh, it ends up being a problem. That's why they yanked him after one inning there in the first game of the season. So, I mean, again, I know it's kind of like a weird weakness to say, but it's true. It's just whenever he starts and gets off to a, a tough start, if, if another team takes advantage of it, Arkansas has got a good bullpen, but uh, they need Hagan Smith to give him five or six innings in these game ones if they want to have a chance to win. John Abrams is with us. What's the uh, the reasoning behind the decision to to bump Molina ahead of Tiger uh, this weekend? Kind of pitching off a little bit or backwards, I guess. Yeah, it, it was kind of something that was interesting from Dave Van Horn, and Dave has made no butts about it, no secrets about it. He knows he's got a really deep team and a really deep bullpen and a really great pitching staff. And so, if you have mistakes or if you if you have issues, he's not hesitating. He he will yank you. He will. He's not going to let you just settle in and unless you're okay, a guy like Hagen Smith, but uh, he's not taking any chances. And, you know, Brady Tiger is a, is a junior. He's a third-year player. He was a really solid closer as a freshman, struggled at times last year. And this year he's been really good, but it's his mentality. And sometimes if things get down on him, he starts kind of falling apart a little bit. And it's just a – it's not an attitude. I don't want to make it sound like it's a bad attitude, but it's just – He's not mentally where he needs to be in some cases. And so I think this is just Dave's leg because Mason Molina has been really solid. Uh, in a lot of cases, in a lot of places, he would be uh, a Friday starter uh, at a lot of other schools. But I think it's just Dave already knew that those two guys were head-to-head -head really close. And Tiger struggled a little bit more than Molina. And I think this is just, hey, you're going up against Bella Shoot as defending champs at home. This is a huge suit for both teams. Can't take any chances. So they feel confident in game one winning, but... I think they just feel more confident in Molina right now as the starter because he's shown some really great stuff. John, you mentioned the bullpen uh, there as well. Um, walk us through kind of the approach. I, I know you, you um, say like Dave Van Horn will will have a quick hook, but are, are they going to rely on on a couple of guys, or is this one of those things where you could see a parade of relievers, situational pitching? How does Dave Van Horn manage it here? Well, he's usually done it with, at least in game one, whenever Hagen's done Hagen's good thing. He brings in uh, Will McIntyre. He's a right-hander who's really, really come along this year. He's an experienced kid, and he's had some great stuff. And uh, they've been feeling really good about him coming out of the bullpen, kind of keeping it all in check and keeping it all rolling in. And then when it comes to the closer role, they've gone through a couple other guys. Uh, you know, sometimes it's been a freshman named Gabe Gappo. He's got some great stuff, uh, but he's still a freshman, still has some issues there. Uh, other times it's been Gage Wood, who's been uh, he's a sophomore this year that's been really good. So they really haven't picked out exactly who their closer is going to be, but that's usually been the case. Is they like to go with Will McIntyre out of out of there. Sometimes they'll go with a guy like Dylan Fouch, who's had a lot of experience uh, there too. 
Uh, sometimes they'll even uh, mix it up a little bit and go with some real young guys that haven't had uh, a lot of chances there. But uh, the thing is, is that Arkansas does have plenty of experience. It's just a matter of the matchup, because I know you guys remember it. Uh, even though, I mean, you guys won the national championship, so it's not like I'm sitting over here saying that anything other. But Arkansas, when they went up against uh, Paul Skeens last year, they actually won both the games Skeens pitched in, but it was because they had two really good left-handers against that uh, lineup for LSU. So I don't think that's going to be the case this year, you know, different teams and everything. So I just feel like uh, Dave Anderson's going to stick to what he knows, and I think after Hagen Smith, you're going to see Will McIntyre tonight. And then, depending on what the score is, you may see some guys you're familiar with or some younger guys going in and trying to get that experience too. A couple more minutes here with John Neighbors on Twitter at John Neighbors Show. If you want to give him a follow, John, the uh, the interesting thing I remember before the season started um, chatting and in LSU and Arkansas before the season looked almost like mirror images. Teams that you thought were talented, tons of arms, but but the the question was where was the offense going to come from? And so far for Arkansas, at times it has been a struggle offensively, like it has been for for LSU as well. Walk me through where the the real issues reside with uh, with the Arkansas offense. Yeah, that's been frustrating, Matt, for Hawk fans so far, and it's gotten a little bit better, but still not good enough. What it is is that they get guys on base. They they'll have times they have bases loaded. They'll have times where you know they they get out to where they got guys at first and second with no outs. I mean, they they do get guys on base and in scoring position. But the problem is, is when that happens, they just collapse. They they get strikeouts. They get Double uh, hitting the double plays, and uh, that that's been just the issue where you just like if you just get something like you're in position, you're right there. You just got to get those guys in, and for whatever reason, they collapse on it. And and in our case, it's not like just oh well, bad timing with whoever's up to bat. Sometimes it's their best hitters, the guys that you count on that need to be able to get guys in the, in that scoring position, and they just haven't done it. And the reason I say that they have gotten better, and a name that I know people there in Louisiana are familiar with, is they finally got Peyton Stovall back who was dealing with a foot injury, broke his foot and practice for the season started. And since they've gotten him back, their, their scoring ha- has, has been better, at least when runners are in scoring position. He's had a lot of RBIs this year. He's hitting home runs. He's looking about as comfortable and as about confident as he ever has. So that's really helped him. But the problem is, is that uh, they, they just don't know how to, in those clutch moments, be able to bring guys home. And it's a, it's a frustrating thing for Van Horn and for Hogman. What, uh, what type of, of weekend are you expecting uh, to see, John, with LSU and Arkansas? Man, it's always a weird one, and I'm going to be honest about this, Matt. I, you know, I know I'm not just saying this because it's on LSU radio, but it's it, it is a weird thing where I feel like LSU and Arkansas always have some great series, and LSU, of course, has had a lot more success overall than Arkansas. But Arkansas had their own. But for some reason, in the regular season at Baum Walker, even if Arkansas feels that they're the better team, even if they feel like they got the talent, they got all the pieces, for some reason, they never win that series. It just has that vibe, and. I feel like this is going to be a similar thing where I think Arkansas will win game one with Hagan Smith, but would not surprise me at all if game two and three when LSU's away. I think no matter what, it's going to be a 2-1 series for either team. I don't think anyone's sweeping the other. Um, and this would be, of course, I know LSU being in a position where they've already lost two series, they would desperately love to have to knock off the number one team on the road in a series. That would be huge for them to get back on track. But uh, this is going to be interesting, sir, because Arkansas played Missouri and they played Auburn. Auburn's fine and Missouri's not good at all. This is going to be the biggest test in SEC play, so it's just a matter of who's going to be the more mentally tough team. But I, I think Arkansas wins this one two one. But just knowing history and trends, it wouldn't surprise me at all if LSU won yeah. one two one too. It's it's so strange, John, because for for a decade almost LSU dominated this the series. Like they they didn't lose a series yeah. to Arkansas, and and it was one. And you're right, it was one of those things like. I mean, of course, everybody remembers the silly rally possum thing back in 2016, but that was just yeah. that, was, that was just part of what defined a series where it kind of didn't matter. LSU sort of had Arkansas's number, but Arkansas has now won the last three weekends, uh, the last three years, the weekend series against LSU. So it it's been one of those things where the trend has shifted toward toward Arkansas, and boy, LSU didn't handle uh, Starkville well on the road. Baum Walker's not any easier, and facing Hagen Smith tonight. Um, little odd to see LSU pitching off as well. But uh, almost saying we're going to concede game one, see if we can win the series by winning games two and three. But uh, I'm, I'm, by the percentages, John, that's that's probably the right way to go. I mean, I, I don't know if there's – that. I don't know how you feel. I don't know if there's many teams that are going to feel really good going out on a Thursday or Friday against Hagen Smith. Yeah, and that's that's the confidence that Razorback fans have right now. But, you know, it's baseball. Crazy things happen. Sometimes, you know, your, your starter may lose a game and – 
that's where Arkansas is hoping that that's not this weekend. Because I'm telling you right now, Matt, if uh, LSU is able to take care of business tonight against Hagen Smith somehow, some way, find a way to win, uh, it, it could it could get bad. And I think LSU LSU is going to win the series. I think it's as simple as that. Whoever wins Game One wins the series, and uh, they're they're confident. They feel good about that, their guys. But you know, Matt, we talked about the offense. Hagen Smith and Arkansas beat Auburn last Thursday, one to nothing. One nothing, yeah. So yeah, yeah, and it was a home run that happened in the first yeah. inning, solo shot from Aloy. And that was it. So Arkansas is just like, okay, we're happy we won, but how about you guys not make it so dramatic and not so intense where we're always on needles? Just get the runs going. But, yeah, I would just be hard-pressed to think that LSU uh, and anybody, that for that matter, gets any sort of thing going against Hagen Smith. But um, it's all going to be about those bullpen guys and if they can close them out because, you know, LSU's got talent. They're, they're a team that, uh, that can be perfectly capable of winning this game, so they're not going to take it for granted. But I think either way it's going to be a fantastic series between two really good teams. Uh, he's John Neighbors on Twitter at John Neighbors Show. Y'all give him a follow. John, always appreciate it, man. Great to catch up. We'll see you soon. Hey, appreciate it, Matt. Thank you so much, man. All right, bud. We'll talk. That's uh, John Neighbors. It's AFR. We're brought to you by First South Farm Credit. If you're thinking of buying land, your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. Or you can visit them online at firstsouthland.com. Firstsouthland.com. Great business, man. Great company that's been around since 1916. More than 100 years, man. First South Farm Credit. They're just the best. I love telling you also about their patronage refund. Because they are a member-owned cooperative, their, their member borrower members share in their profits. So if you borrow from First South Farm Credit, you are going to get a check at the end of the year. It's amazing um, the way that they operate. First South Farm Credit... Uh, Really enjoyed getting to know my friends over there and seeing all the great success stories. If you want to buy that recreational property, you want to buy a piece of land, 20 acres to build your, your dream home, you want to buy, uh, if it's if it's agriculture, you need 1,000 acres, or you need agriculture, your farm equipment you need to finance. First South Farm Credit can help. Your first call, your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. Go to firstsouthland.com, firstsouthland.com. All right, y'all. Um, We'll go around the SEC in a bit. We'll uh, preview Pell's Bucks here as well uh, this hour as Pell's try to get back to their winning ways. An interesting mock draft that has uh, a scenario where Jaden Daniels falls outside of the top 10. I know it's laughable. It feels laughable, but I'll paint that picture for you here in about ha a half an hour from right now. The um, Boy, I, you know, I, I understand if you're, if you're Arkansas, why you have all the confidence in the world with with Hagen Smith going. But I, I'll remind you, man, it, John's right. Look, Arkansas beat LSU on that Friday with Paul Skeens throwing. And it was a it was a close ball game. I remember it was going to be a night game. It got moved up because it was the threat of weather. And then ultimately, it wound up going to extra innings. Chase Shores pitched late in that game for LSU. Um, and LSU lost that Friday night game with uh, with Skeens on the bump. They lost the Friday night game against South Carolina, the one where obviously Skeens out and got cut to only three innings because of rain. But... Um, Baseball, man, funny things happen. It's one of the reasons I don't like pitching off. I, I I understand what Jay Johnson is doing. He's looking and saying, what is my best percentage opportunity to win this weekend? Not win tonight's game, but win the series. And having Luke Holman go against Molina in game two is, is your best opportunity to get a game. And then if Gage Jump is on against Tiger in game three, yeah, I mean, I, I like... L I like Holman over Molina. I like Jump over Tiger. I think LSU has the pitching advantage in games two and three, especially against an offense that struggled to get going. But boy, just like you saw what happened last week in game two. I mean, you had the game one, and just like that, it's gone. It's baseball. Funny things happen. So it's, don't, it's hard to just say, yeah, well, look, we're just going to we'll see how it goes on Friday but, or on Thursday. We're really going to gonna put all our eggs in the, in the, the Friday-Saturday basket. So... Again, percentage-wise, it's probably the higher percentage play. It's just it's a hard thing to it's a hard thing to go in a weekend and just say, yeah, we're going to concede game one. Okay, um, let me knock out a quick break. We'll go around the SEC. Stay here. AFR. Get Gordon and get it done. Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. And we're going to have Gordon in studio with us uh, in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to have a really fun initiative, a um, initiative with all of the female members of the G team for a really cool cause around women's athletics. We'll tell you more about that as we get closer. But I always encourage you to go follow Gordon on all the social media, uh, Twitter, X, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. 
You'll see all the great content there with Gordon chatting with members of the G team. They got a great video up right now with Alex Malazzo. Um, and and uh, by the way, uh, he's got custom cleats and also a way how you can win a $100 gift card and an autographed Get Gordon Baseball. So go check it out. Uh, you, can, you can see the new custom cleats as well. Uh, actually, you're going to see the custom cleats on April the 4th. But nonetheless, go check it out on all the social media there with Alex Malazzo at Get Gordon at Get Gordon. You've been injured. You know what to do. Go to GetGordon.com. Get Gordon and get it done. Elevate brand visibility. Ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park miles and miles of trails and parks just for your dogs there are more places to splash to explore to run wild and even soar you imagined we delivered gold Breck, your number one park system in the nation electricity is all around us and our families depend on it every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal a movie night and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana. After further review with Matt Moscona. All right, rolling along. Glad to have you board with us here. I got a text into the show uh, from a gentleman named Clyde. I won't tell you his last name, but um, he said, Matt, we were talking about NIL in the first segment in, in context of uh, Brian Kelly at Pro Day was asked about, is, is NIL helping keep sort of um, borderline players in school? And the numbers 100% back that up. There are only 58 underclassmen that declare for the draft. That's the fewest since 2011. So undeniably, you're seeing more players elect to stay in school because of NIL and the portal. You just have a better opportunity. You can make money in college and transfer and maybe go to a better opportunity to put out better film for, for the next level. Uh, and this is one day after Lane Kiffin uh, gave an interview to our, our friends over at Rebel Grove, and he 
uh, called the the current system uh, with the portal and everything a um, an expletive system. Um, it rhymed with what did we say? A, a gritty, gritty with That's what we said. Yeah, with a T. Yeah, yeah, not with a D, like the dance. Not the dance. Yeah, the I don't remember what else we said, but yeah, G R I. State of mind. There we go. Yeah, yeah, grit gritty. But if it started with shh, yeah, and didn't have an R. Yeah. That's the word Lane Kiffin used. And my point was, hey, Lane, you spent one year at Tennessee and left for USC. You had a contract. You brought coaches with you and their wives and their families and their kids to Knoxville, and you were gone after a year. You recruited players. You sold their parents, their families, and then you just up and left. Like, And you had a contract, by the way. What, we're not holding you to the same standard that you're holding 18, 19, 20-year-olds? The hypocrisy is laughable. Anyway, I got this message from Clyde. He said, Matt, what about the fans? It's become very challenging to be a loyal fan of a college football team. We typically follow a player's progression for two to three years. Now it's difficult to know the names of half the 22 starters. Clyde, I understand that. I also don't care. Um, I And I, I, do, I don't mean to be crass at, at, at all. Um, but without even looking, I I could tell you that Clyde was probably an older fan because that's an older mentality. And I, I looked, and he's he's 62 years old. Um, and and that, I don't mean for that to be uh, – that's not discriminatory or, or meant to be insulting at all. I think it's just an, an, an explanation of how different demographics view the uh, situation differently. I think old an older demographic is going to look at NIL and the transfer portal and talk about things like loyalty and what are the fans. And the reality is the the 19-year-old wide receiver who's transferring because someone's going to pay him 300 k and he's going to go from being fourth on the depth chart to first, like he's not worrying about the guy in Section 416. He's, he's not. And you could say that's a shame, and I would say, well, I don't really care because if I was that kid, I'd probably do the exact same thing. Like, if you work for a company and someone wants to hire you and give you a raise and a better opportunity, you leave. It's what you do. It's what Lane Kiffin did when he left for Southern Cal, left Tennessee for Southern Cal, left for what he perceived to be a better opportunity. We all want advancement in life. So my my suggestion is if you're a fan – Cheer for your school, not the player. I mean, the reality is, like, I graduated from LSU. I don't care what kids are wearing the jersey. I'm always going to be a fan of LSU. Regardless. Like, players are going to come and go. Coaches are going to come and go. But the three letters are always the three letters. So, I mean, that's that would be my, my suggestion to you. But for those that argue, well, college football is going to suffer and lose market share, that's just, it's a factual ina- inaccuracy. We are seeing... Everything associated with college football increase. Television rights, contracts, salaries, it, literally ratings, everything associated with college football is going up. So you can argue that the portal and NIL is hurting college football, and you'd be dead wrong because there's nothing material that that uh, that agrees with that with that um, that assertion. There is nothing objective, nothing concrete that suggests that NIL is hurting college football or the portal is hurting college football because everything associated with it is going up. All right, uh, it's after further review. We're brought to you by Pure Restoration. I'm going to go around the SEC in just a quick second. Remember, pure-restoration.com, pure-restoration.com. Kill mold, remove odor, other harmful pathogens. Uh, If you have or think you might have mold in your home, call Pure Restoration. They can do it quickly and uh, effectively and affordably. They come in. They'll spray their patented non-toxic dry fog. It's really a cool process if you've never seen it. You can see videos on the website. But they have these vans that are fully equipped with the hoses attached. They come in. They just walk into your home or your office building or whatever it is. And they just they fog the whole thing because it's a fog. It'll give it a, get into every nook and cranny. It'll kill everything. Every harmful pathogen, every piece of mold, the spores. As soon as the fog dissipates, boom, you're back in free and clear. And you're not cutting sheetrock or anything. So it's more, it's more cost-effective. And it's more efficient. I mean, for a residential home, a couple hours, maybe? It's Pure Restoration. Pure-Restoration.com. Pure-Restoration.com. Okay, uh, let's go quickly. Let's go around the SEC. 
around the SEC, bringing you the biggest news from the nation's best conference, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Alabama wide receiver Jalen Hale suffered a lower leg injury during spring practice earlier this week. Severity unknown, but an ambulance was called to the facility, according to On3, who was at the practice. Um, uh, Hale is one of those guys hoping to have a breakout season this year in Tuscaloosa after not playing much a year ago, but uh, he did average nearly 30 yards per reception a season ago as a big play. He was a four-star prospect, number 38 overall in the country when he signed with the Tide a year ago. The Ole Miss Rebels. Kentucky forward Adu Thero has entered the NCAA transfer portal. He's a sophomore, played 25 games this past season, started 19 times for the Kentucky Wildcats. For the Kentucky Wildcats. For the Kentucky Wildcats. <laughs> I'll put up the Ole Miss graphic. Um, <laughs> he averaged seven and five for John Calipari's team. He was a three-star recruit, the number 265 overall player in the country. Uh, played in 20 games as a true freshman. The Ole Miss Rebels. Now we go to Ole Miss. Um, the Athletic is reporting that Cameron Barnes is hitting the, uh, the transfer portal. Just one season there in Ole Miss. Um, did not play in a game during his freshman season for the Rebs. Out of high school, he was a three-star, number 183 overall. Uh, if he does hit the portal, it'd be the third loss of the portal this cycle for Ole Miss. Rashad Marshall and Malik Ewan have already entered the portal, leaving Ole Miss. Okay, there you have it. That is around the SEC. Glad to have you aboard with us here on this Thursday edition of AFR. I want to remind you, our whole staff is going to be off on Friday uh, for Good far, uh, Friday to enjoy the Easter weekend with their family. So, uh, no, uh, well, I, I take that. I take that back. The only show that is going to be on is uh, Live at Lunch with uh, Charles and Jimmy because they do their show on remote every day and they got their remote sold. So they're going to do. They're going to choose to do their show tomorrow. But everybody else, I know for a lot of our affiliates, that doesn't mean much to you. But uh, off the bench, Hunt and, and us, we'll all take the uh, take Good Friday off and spend the Easter weekend with our family. We hope you all do the same. But we got a lot to do in the meantime. Another uh, two hours and 15 minutes while we uh, drive you home. We're glad to have you aboard. Let me knock out a break. We'll come back. Preview Pell's Bucks tonight as Pell's try to get back uh, in the win columns. They're pushing toward, hopefully, 50 wins with uh, 10 games to play. And we'll see if they can notch one in their belt tonight with um, with Milwaukee, Giannis, and the crew coming into the blender. Stick around here. It's AFR. AFR. Hey, remember, uh, remember Rouse's. We've got Easter this weekend. Everybody knows that. Maybe you're having a crawfish boil. Remember, Rouse's has your crawfish live and boiled if you want it. Also, over at Rouse's, they have amazing deals if you're looking to go uh, make your groceries or you're going to be hosting people for Easter. Listen to some of these Easter week specials right now. Uh, 288 a pound for 81% lean ground beef. That's $1.61 per pound off. Wild caught head on 9 to 12 count Louisiana shrimp, just $5.99 a pound. You save $2 a pound. You can pick up a 30-ounce jar of blue plate mayonnaise for $2.97. You're saving a dollar two per jar. 24 pack of 12-ounce Coca-Cola soft drinks for just $9.97. You're saving $3.72. That is insane savings over at Rouse's right now for this Easter weekend. And of course, crawfish live and boiled while supplies last. So call our friends over at Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Rouse's. This feels like home. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. You're looking forward to 50 more. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. 
So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan After further review with Matt Moscona. I already hate baseball season. Why is that? I mean, Garrett Cole's out for 60 days. Saw that. Astros are beating the Yankees 4 to nothing in the bottom of the second. Mm. Stupid baseball. I'm not going to watch any baseball at all. Now that's a lie. You know that's a lie. I know that's a lie. I think everybody listening knows that's a lie. No, I'm not because there's no games on. That is the truth. <laughs> that that is true. The, the fact that there's, I mean, a full slate of baseball in the first nationally televised <laughs> games at 6:35. How stupid is that? How Bruh. stupid Major League Baseball is. It's opening day of Major League Baseball. Many who celebrate believe it should be a national holiday. I come in studio, we got four TVs in here, and this is actually four, five, six, if you include these monitors here. And I'm looking up at TV, and I got college hockey on ESPN2. It was college hockey? It's college <laughs> hockey on ESPN2 and NFL Live on ESPN, which respect, but you guys can take a day off. It's opening day. So I'm like, well, let me hit the guide and see. Or Well, the Cubbies play tonight, so no Cubs on WGN, no Braves on Turner. I'm like, is there really no, it's 3.52 in the afternoon on opening day and there's no games on at all? I got no games. And I'm following the Yankees and there's no Garrett Cole because he's on, on the IL for 60 days. So they start Nestor Cortez and it's, I, I look at it, it's 4 nothing in the second. I just hate baseball. I hate it. I hate it. I, I, I'm done. I'm done with baseball. I'm not watching that. I'm not watching that at all this year. Okay, now we're back to that not being true. Uh, but I will say no one's ever accused Major League Baseball of being great at marketing their sport. How dumb is this? It's awful. Opening day of Major League Baseball, and there's not a, there's one, one game that's nationally televised. Yeah. One. It's the Cubs and the Rangers at six six oh five, six thirty. What I time is it tonight? Six thirty. Six thirty tonight. Stupid. Yeah. No, just just opening day, just the day when every when everybody, even casuals, are like into it. Give me your sport today. Give it. To, I want your sport today. I know you're going to play 162 of them, and there's going to be lulls and some sleepy days. You know, there'll be days where there's there's 12,000 people in the stands. Yeah. You know what I mean? A little matinee, a little getaway day. Hell uh, yeah. But the day when everybody who loves baseball is like, give me your product. And so instead I got, well, I put our show on WBTR on that TV right there. So shout out, you can watch us on WBTR. There's me right there on the top, top right. There's me. And then there's, that's still NFL Live on that one right and we got a clock and then a studio monitor. So I am on one, two, I, I am on four of our six TVs.
<laughs> and no baseball. And no baseball. And no baseball. Stupid. Stupid baseball. We're brought to you by Relief Windows, reliefwindows.com. Uh, Pels are back on the floor tonight against uh, Millie Wauke. Of course, uh, you know what would be great? If we call Brandon Holly and Relief Windows and put some windows in the studio. There's no windows in the studio anywhere. There's no, there's no windows. But if we were going to install windows in the studio, you know we call Relief Windows because they're the best. Windows, doors, and siding. Hardy Plank and Vinyl Siding, they're just the best, y'all. We're getting toward the summer months. You know what's going to happen. Triple-digit temps. You want to make your home more energy efficient to prevent skyrocketing energy bills. Energy efficient windows to prevent those costly air leaks. Nobody does it better than Relief Windows or reliefwindows.com. 288-8138. 288-8138 for Relief Windows and reliefwindows.com. Uh, Pels are back on the floor tonight. It is, it is a national game. It's NBA TV. There's a national game for you. Uh, NBA TV. Uh, Mil, uh, the Bucks are one and a half point favorite. No B.I. for the Pels, obviously, as he's going to miss two weeks from that injury. So we'll see if they can get him back before the end of the regular season. But uh, hopefully a nice bounce back spot here for New Orleans. After they lost to Orlando last week, really good bounce back against Miami. Lost to OKC. We'll see if they can do it tonight against Milwaukee. Hour two coming up after SportsCenter. AFR. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot. I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. It was a human day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip away. Like cypress stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Oh, I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway from sunrise to sunset. <laughs> Playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more.
This is SportsCenter. I'm Doug Brown. Season openers hosted by the Mets and Phillies both rained out today, but it is opening day for baseball in North America. Coming up at 7 Eastern here on ESPN Radio, the Rangers celebrate their World Series title one last time before hosting the Cubs. As the new season starts, questions about the status of Nationals right-hander Steven Strasburg. He goes on the 60-day injured list today. He hasn't pitched in almost two years. Strasburg decided to retire last summer, but the Nats, for now, are not accepting that decision. On his podcast today, Draymond Green of the Warriors says he deserved to be kicked out last night against the Magic. ESPN's Tim Legler says it was just Green being selfish. There's no other word for it. You are putting yourself and your own emotions and your desire to vent and, by the way, act like you're a victim, which is the thing that blows me away the most. Draymond always tries to act like he's been victimized or targeted. Tim Legler on Unsportsmanlike. The first four games of the Sweet 16 tonight, two in Los Angeles and two in Boston. Hey, it's Michelle Smallman. Coming up Friday, I'll give you my biggest takeaways from baseball's opening day. It's Unsportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Number two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Make it a 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 me you so. And Mr. Toby Tomplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Uh, we'll talk to Mincy in an hour. Uh, no show tomorrow, so Mincy will be here. We'll do our college baseball uh, best bets for the weekend. And um, bottom of this hour, Muse, Polly, and I will give you our MLB predictions. Sure to go wrong. We'll pick the division winners, uh, the ALNL champion, a World Series champion. We're going to get them all very wrong, obviously, as we always do. Um so pro days are happening, so you're starting to see more and more updated mock drafts. And I'll, I always feel like I have to throw out the caveat when we talk about a mock draft. A mock draft is nothing more than a fun exercise. Sometimes you can see trends when there are people uh, doing mock drafts that you, that you trust. Um, if there are a dozen really well-respected NFL uh, writers or draft analyst experts that are all projecting the same thing like Caleb Williams won over all of the Bears... We can all understand Caleb Williams is going to go number one overall to the Bears. We can accept that. But more so, I think it's a good exercise just to see what is possible, what types of uh, what you know, players might be on the board or around when your favorite team is picking, that, that sort of thing. But I saw a mock draft today that I wanted to share just because it's a dramatic outlier from what we've, we've seen. Not in the sense of Caleb Williams going number one because everybody has that right now. But this was a mock draft over at Yahoo, and it's uh, Charles McDonald and Nate Tice, and they did an alternating mock draft. So um, Charles McDonald made the odd number picks, and then Nate Tice made the even number picks. So Charles picked first, Nate picked second, Charles picked third, Nate picked fourth. You get it. And the first uh, pick, no surprise whatsoever, uh, would be Caleb Williams won to the Bears, and then a little bit of a surprise with Drake May going two to the Commanders. And we've seen most mock drafts um, obviously have Caleb Williams going number one overall. And then it's really a question of May Daniels or Daniels May 2-3. Like, who's going to go to Washington and who's going to go to the Patriots? Well, in this scenario, they predicted a trade with the Vikings going up to number three to take a quarterback. But the quarterback is not Jaden Daniels. 
Uh, they're projecting the Minnesota Vikings trading up to number three to take J.J. McCarthy of Michigan. I have a thought on that and why this is probably ridiculous, but very quickly just to move through the rest of how this all plays out then. So um, Marvin Harrison Jr., number four to Arizona. Joe Alt, the tackle out of Notre Dame, five to the Chargers. Aroma Dunze, six to the Bears. Olufashanu, this would break my heart, seven to the Titans. Most people have Dallas Turner going eight to the Falcons. That's what happens here. Malik Neighbors, nine to the Bears, um, obviously with a trade there. The uh, Jets taking Bowers at 10. Have you noticed uh, something yet about the top 10 picks? Anything stand out yet about the top 10 picks? Anything stand out yet about the top, about the top 10 picks? Williams, May, McCarthy, oh. Harrison, Alt, Adunze, Fashanu, Turner, Neighbors, Bowers. No Jaden Daniels. No Jaden Daniels. They are projecting Jaden Daniels then at 11, of uh, the Patriots trading there with the Vikings, um, or the, taking the Vikings pick that they traded to move down and taking Jaden Daniels at 11. Um. It feels absurd considering the, the number of quarterback needy teams that in this draft, if Jaden Daniels moves outside of the top three, that a team that needed a quarterback wouldn't move up there to take Jaden Daniels. Because with every pick he falls, you're getting more and more value for someone that you feel could potentially be the best quarterback in the draft. Like, for example... If this scenario plays out, right, where the Giants move down to nine, if Jaden Daniels is still on the board at nine, wouldn't you take Jaden Daniels at nine? It's it's that kind of thing. Um, but I, I cra crazy things happen in the draft. We ran through this scenario earlier in the week that had Roma Dunze falling to the Saints at fourteen. I ran through uh, a piece of some of the most dramatic draft scenarios and falls over the last you know, twenty years from you know Matt Leinart lasting all the way to 10, which sounds weird. That, but but at the time, I mean, there was talk of Matt Liner going, you know, you know, in the top one or two picks of the draft. Uh, if it was Aaron Rodgers falling or Brady Quinn falling or Johnny Manziel falling, um, the, uh, the Lyle Collins going undrafted, Vontez Burfitt going undrafted. Those are different scenarios as they, as they played out. Geno Smith falling into round two um, and then firing his agent. Um, there's... The, Weird things happen in the draft. We go in thinking we know certain things because we've seen so many mock drafts for months and months and months that we accept it as truth and reality that this is how something's going to play out. But it doesn't always work out that way because there's an unpredictability of the draft. But I always lean on Vegas way more than, than I do writers who do mock drafts because the odds makers who are going to take bets on the draft, it's their job to know so that way they can put out representative odds. And what's so interesting is I just saw this come into the inbox um, looking at some of the draft props and how they've changed since November. So, uh, and J.J. McCarthy, it, his odds are, are moving up. But the odds right now for the one, number one overall pick, Jaden Daniels opened 66-1. to one. He's now at 12-1 to one to go number one overall. It, let's be very clear. Caleb Williams is going to go number one overall. But, but Jaden Daniels has had this this dramatic, like skyrocketing effect. The number one overall pick, Drake May, opened four to one. Now he's 33 to one. So you've seen Jaden Daniels surpass Drake May. As far as the number two pick, Jaden Daniels was three to one. Now it's even money. McCarthy opened 14 to one. He's now three to one. Drake May opened one to two. It's now two to one. His odds have completely flipped. So more what you've seen is the the McCarthy chatter starting to go up and it's it's kind of as far as the money wagered a dead heat with may and daniels however it's going to go the question is what happens there after um after number two or number three so uh, caleb williams is minus five thousand to go number one overall like he's going to be the number one overall pick we we know that much the number two overall pick Jaden daniels is the betting favorite to go number two overall at at even money but the, the J.J. McCarthy thing is the interesting thing. And the reason I, I'm sifting through all this, the J.J. McCarthy thing is the most interesting because wherever J.J. McCarthy goes, 
or, or however many quarterbacks come off the board before the Saints pick, that dramatically uh, improves the, the Saints' opportunity of having a great player fall to them because they're not, in theory, going to be in the market for a quarterback. So if you have Williams and Daniels and May and McCarthy and maybe even Knicks, if you have five quarterbacks come off the board before the Saints pick and you know Harrison and Neighbors and Bowers and Turner and some of those guys that are lo- Joe Alt or locks to go ahead of the Saints, it's pushing really good players down, some really good player down in New Orleans. So the odds for the number three overall pick, Drake May is the betting favorite at minus 150, and then Jaden Daniels at 2-1, to one, and then J.J. McCarthy at 5-1. to one. So there's a team somewhere that is falling in love with or has fallen in love with J.J. McCarthy. And, I mean, we could have this conversation about what is so enticing about J.J. McCarthy, and I don't necessarily get it because he's a guy that didn't do a ton. In co- he, he never threw for 3,000 yards in college, despite this year in Michigan, playing in 12 regular season games, the conference championship game, and two playoff games. McCarthy played in 15 games this year and didn't even reach 3,000 yards passing. So when I look at J.J. McCarthy, like the skins aren't necessarily on the wall as far as production at the collegiate level. But there's always these guys that don't necessarily produce at that level in college that still find their way at the top of the draft or to become starters. You know, Jared Goff was the number one overall pick of the draft. Uh, you could go turn back the, the clock a little bit to, to Jay Cutler, who didn't win a ton at Vanderbilt, was a productive player, but he was more of a, of a prospect. Mitch Trubisky is probably the, the better um, example there. Matt Castle never started a game at Southern Cal. He was Matt Leinart's backup. So, but it, what was drafted in the seventh round, went to New England and, and started the year that Tom Brady tore his ACL in 2008 and won 11 games as, as the starting quarterback. Um, you can go back to Brad Johnson. You know, Brad Johnson sat for three years at Florida State, ended up playing one season, had a long NFL career. You know, a year ago was Anthony Richardson. I mean, Anthony Richardson was just really a a freak show athlete that really had one season as the starter at Florida where he didn't show a ton but ended up being a top five pick. So it happens. And and maybe there's a team that that they're falling in love with certain aspects of J.J. McCarthy's game. It's just so hard to justify the investment in a player that you maybe feel like you don't know a ton about. He's a two-year starter at Michigan. They did win the national championship. But my goodness, like when you watch... When you watched Michigan play, they didn't even have to throw the ball. Their offensive line was so dominant, their ability to run, their great defense. So um, maybe I'm maybe I'm unfairly penalizing McCarthy because the rest of his team around him was so good that it didn't necessitate him playing a ton and playing a huge role in their success. But if you're going to talk about being a top five pick or a first round quarterback, like it feels like you you really would like to have seen more production at the collegiate level, which wasn't there for J.J. McCarthy, but apparently it's not scaring off teams as even Vegas, the numbers are, 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 are backing it up as you've seen McCarthy's odds to be a top three pick just dramatically increase here in the past couple of weeks. Uh, we're counting down to the draft. I had a conversation earlier today, as a matter of fact. Looks like we will be at, the, at the Don Juan again for our draft party. So looking forward to that if you're up. Uh, if you're going to be looking for something to do on on uh, the Thursday the of the first round of the NFL draft, past several years we've done our draft party over at Don Juan Cigar Bar, and we're looking forward to being back there. So put it on your calendar and join us. Our whole staff will be out there. We'll stream live all throughout the draft. Uh, fun companion show, or just come hang out with us there at Don Juan the night of uh, the night of the first round of the draft. All right, um, it's after further review. Love having you aboard with us here. We're brought to you by Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. ShawBillsTire.com. I got an awesome text yesterday into the show. Remember, you can always text us, 225-396-4400, 396-4400, 396-4400. I got this text from a gentleman named Alan. And he said, Matt, I wanted to give a shout out and a testimonial on the great service that a colleague and I received from Shaw Bills and Laplace today. He said, I was riding with a colleague when he had a blowout on I-10 heading to New Orleans. We changed the tire, then had a blowout with the spare. We were near Laplace, so we called Shawbills. Richard from the Laplace location picked up my colleague and the blown-out tire, sold him the new tire, 
had it mounted and brought him back. Then after his jacket failed, they came back, or his jack failed, they came back with a floor jack and helped us change the tires. Then they had to stop by the shop to ensure the lug nuts were properly secured. They couldn't have been more friendly or helpful. Awesome service. You know what I say every day when I talk about shop bills? They treat you like family. Think about that. They come pick you up. They help you change the tire. They bring the jack. They bring you back to the shop to make sure the lug nuts are on tight. They get your, like, that's what you would expect from a family member who they're, they're riding with you no matter what. That's what Shaw Bills does. That's what they've done for more than 50 years. Like, that's why I say every day, yes, they're going to sell you name brand tires at wholesale prices, but they're going to treat you like family. And that experience that Alan and his colleague had, do you think they're ever going to go to another tire shop ever anywhere? Not a chance because Shaw Bills is the best. And when they treat you like family, you keep coming back year after year after year. It's Shaw Bills. ShawBillsTire.com. Shaw Bills, where we keep your old. Okay. And thanks so much to Alan for sharing that testimony. We appreciate it greatly. All right, let me knock out a break. Um, we'll pivot from some draft stuff to next year's uh, NFL. We we'll get some win totals, our MLB predictions. Muse, Paulie, and I. Uh, Mincy's here in 45 minutes from right now. We got some college football playoff hopefuls as well. Ton to do. Glad you're here. Stick around. It's AFR. AFR. Hey, all this week when I've told you about Darren James, uh, Darren has told me to use his live read. So this time that he pays for for me to do his endorsement every day to mention a family that um, their daughter has cerebral palsy and as a result is not able to walk uh, because of the cerebral palsy in her left foot. And her name is Gracie Filler. And there's a there's a procedure that will allow her to, to walk again, but it's only partly covered by insurance. And so Darren said, hey, look, use my live reads all this week to promote this GoFundMe for the Filler family. And the little girl's name is Gracie, Gracie Filler. And... This is so cool. Uh, Melissa Filler, the mom, and her and her husband, they posted a video on Facebook thanking Darren and played the comments we've been making all week. And it's so awesome. Thanks to everybody who's been able to help uh, Gracie Filler's GoFundMe. Think real estate. Think Darren James. There it is. The extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, 
and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Moscona. Uh, LSU and Arkansas game one. We're about an hour, a little more than an hour, half away, hour and 40 minutes away to be exact from first pitch of the Tigers and the number one Hogs. And uh, we still do not know yet who is going to be taking the ball for LSU in this ball game as LSU has decided to hold Luke Holman and Gage Jump on their regular days, Friday and Saturday. You're obviously not going to move Thatcher Hurd from a Sunday to a Thursday on that short rest. So we've yet to see who they're going to use uh, in this ball game tonight. But uh, Jay Johnson was on off the bench earlier this morning and talked about the decision to hold a Holman and jump on their regular days. I always focus on our team first, and I addressed this with the team yesterday. Like it actually has nothing to do with our opponent. It has everything to do with Holman and jump. Both threw over a hundred pitches last week, so we need those guys for the duration. And I just felt like it was a smart move this week. Depending on how these games go, we could bump them up next week because we're going Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So it really had everything to do to position ourselves with our two best starters staying on track and staying on track for the long haul of this thing. You could flip that, though, and say, okay, well, then what's Arkansas doing moving Hagen Smith up? It's it, And last year, you moved Skeens up on Thursdays when you played Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's just... Let's just call it what it is, man. I mean, you're you're looking at Hagen Smith. You realize your offense is struggling, and you don't want to burn Holman, who could go throw brilliantly tonight, and you still lose. So you're giving yourself the bet what you feel is the best shot to win this weekend. So I get it. Again, I don't I don't love it, but I understand what Jay's doing now. Um, he elaborated a little bit more about um, how good they they feel they are when you have Holman and Jump starting. With those two guys pitching. We're as good as any team in college baseball. I really believe that. Yeah. And, you know, the results to this point have shown that. Uh, what we need to do is to try to separate against other good pitchers we're facing offensively a little bit better and then uh, figure out kind of the, the back of the bullpen thing, which at times has been really good. And um, it, it just wasn't. It hasn't been through these first, you know, six games of SEC play, you know, other than Griffin Herring's performance last Friday against Florida. See if else you can go out there and uh... – and get it done tonight against Arkansas on the road. It is a uh, that is going to be a really steep climb. Thinking you're going to get this one on the road against um, uh, against Arkansas with Hagen Smith on the bump, but uh, that's why they'll uh, they'll throw out the ball and see how they do. Arkansas is minus 200 tonight. Honestly, that I thought that line would be much bigger with uh, with LSU pitching off, but we'll see how it goes. All right, it is after further review. We're glad to have you hanging out with us here. Amuse Paul and I are going to give you our. Um, our MLB predictions here in just a second. Love telling you about Evermore. I ran out. I drank my last bottle yesterday. I need to get some more. Normally, I have Evermore sitting right here on the set with us, uh, and I'm devastated that I don't have my, my bottle. But um, it's become such a part of my day now, such a part of my routine. Uh, Evermore, it's great-tasting, all-natural, artesian water from a well. It is Mother Nature's masterpiece. This is nothing added, nothing taken away. I mean, it's from the well. It's run... Uh, straight through the filter just to get like dirt and stuff from the ground out of it. But there's nothing added or taken away from the water. The whole filtration pot process is amazing. How they bottle it, it does not touch air until you uncap that bottle and take your first sip. It is awesome. Uh, go read the comments in the reviews. Go go look at Google reviews and look at some of the experiences people have had. You want better hydration. You want a healthier product. Water isn't just water. Uh, and you'll learn that when you try Evermore. And this is a Louisiana product as well. So support a great Louisiana business. We've got natural, a national distribution. So even if you're outside of Louisiana, go to your local retailer. And if they don't have Evermore, ask for Evermore. Make sure they're carrying it. E-V-A-M-O-R. E-V-A-M-O-R. Evermore.com or available at great local retailers. Okay. Uh, hit me with some music, Muse, if you would. As we learned, today is uh, opening day. For Major League Baseball. Uh, I'm not going to watch baseball at all this year. That's my New Year's resolution. It's, the, it's March. You cannot make a New Year's resolution in March. My and damn you're, show, I'll and do you're a liar. 
I'll do whatever I want. It's my show. Um, Garrett Cole placed on the 60-day IL. The reigning Cy Young Award winner. The only good thing the Yankees had going for him last year when they couldn't hit a lick was Garrett Cole. And despite having the Cy Young winner, they missed the playoffs for the first time since 2016. So tell me why I should be excited. Watch Juan Soto Juan go Soto, out there. Yeah, I'm going to go watch man. Juan Soto stink. Juan Soto. Great. He's not going to stink. He's going to stink. No, watch no. Him, watch another, another big ticket free agent come to the Bronx and stink. That's No, he's going to be fine. Look at what's happened. You fake Red Sox fan over there, you're trying to make me feel better about myself. Hey, chill out, man. I'm going to be in the cellar, too. All right? Come hey, on. Y'all are going to stink. It's going to be bad. You talk about Garrett Cole. Lucas G. Ludo's out for the whole year. Have you seen the uh, the division odds? No, I'm avoiding that. Hold on. We're going to lose to the Mariners tonight. This is going to be... This is so good. Hold on. This will make me happy. <laughs> this is so good. This, how bad is it? Are they, like, friggin' Hold on. plus 4,000? Oh, it's worse than that. Oh, lovely. Uh, Hold on. Our owner all right, hates division his own winners. Team. The uh, all right, AL East. So the Yankees and and the Orioles are uh, both plus one eighty five. Okay, that makes sense. Yankees win total projected is ninety one and a half. Uh, that's eh. take the under, take the under, kids. Uh, Toronto plus four hundred, Rays plus five fifty, Red Sox plus seventeen hundred <laughs> to win not the worse division. Than four thousand. I didn't hear what you said. Okay. They're, they're going to stink, and that's awesome. John Actually, Henry just, hates his team more than the opposition. It's what happens. I'm going to laugh at y'all. That's, that, that'll be my uh, my respite this year. Okay. Um, let's go through it. We do this every year, and then we hold ourselves accountable. At the end of the season, we always come back. We revisit this. Paul makes a really good-looking graphic because that's why he's the Louisiana Association of Broadcasters' best producer. Um, so, Paul, make a good graphic reminding us how bad we are at, uh, at this. All right, let's start in the uh, the National League, then we'll go to the American League. Let's start with the East. I'll go first. Give me the Braves. Yeah, give me the Braves. Yeah, no question, Braves. Braves and Phillies um, odds are comparable, um, but I just love Atlanta now, especially because they don't bunt at all. <laughs> they don't. Uh, they if don't. you missed that last year, they were the first team in like 100 years that didn't have a single sacrifice bunt in the first half of the season. They went to the All-Star break without having had a sacrifice ball. I love the Braves. You would love banana ball. If you button banana ball, the player gets ejected. Oh, I love that. It's so good. Uh, NL Central. News. Uh, I'm actually going to take the Cubbies here, man. I like I like bringing in Craig Council. He does nothing but lead teams to the playoffs. So give me the Cubbies. Pauly. I have to agree with Moose. I like the Cubs here. I think the Reds are a year away, but I'm mm-hmm. going to go with the Cubs. Uh, I'm going to go Cardinals. All right. Give me the Cardinals in the Central. Uh, all right, West, Paul, you start at this time. This should be consensus. I can't imagine any of us are going to go yeah, anything. I'm going to go with the Dodgers. Dodgers. Yeah, they know the Dodgers, regular season. Dodgers. Yeah. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah. I mean, well, is Shohei going to get thrown in jail? <laughs> is Shohei <laughs> going to get kicked out of baseball? They're still going to win the division and then lose in the playoffs. That's what they do. See, when you see my prediction right. a little bit later. All right. All right, let's go on to the AL uh, AL East. I'll go first. Uh, I'm actually taking Baltimore in the AL East. I'm with you, Baltimore. Okay, wow. Okay, yeah, Polly. I am also going with the Orioles. Oh, wow. I wanted to pick them last year, and I got talked out of doing it. I'm not doing that again. They're really good. None of you going Yankees. None yeah. of us going Yankees. Mm-mm. Yankees are the betting favorite to win the division. Yeah, and you know what's surprising? I actually think the Rays would probably sneak up and do it before anybody else because the Rays are always good. Uh, Central, Muse. Twins to repeat. Love the lineup. I went back and forth on this one between the Twins and the Guardians, but I ultimately decided on the Twins. Twins? I'm going Twins as well. This is boring. West? Rangers this year, actually. Oh, they almost got Pauly it done start. last year. With all you start. Oh. Well, Muse already did this. You fine. looked at me. I'm sorry. I did. I'm going with the Astros. I'm going Strohs as well. Okay, so Paulie and I have the Strohs. Muse, you have the I Rangers. Have the Rangers. Okay, NL champ. Um, Paulie, you start. NL champ. I'll be the Braves. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going Dodgers. Braves. Okay. I like the disagreement. And uh, AL champ, Muse. The Baltimore Orioles. Woo! By the way, none of us had the Rangers a year ago. It's true. Who would have had the Rangers? Nobody. Exactly. That's the uh, point. Polly. I'm going to go with one of my wild card surprises and go with the Mariners. Okay. Uh, Terrio was big on the Mariners a year ago, if you recall. 
Paulie so was sneaky telling me the other day. Sneaky young team, sneaky young team coming up. Um, I'm going Astros. I am going just heinous chalk all over this thing. I think we're going to see another Astros Dodgers World Series. It just feels like we're steamrolling toward it. And the Astros know how to win in the postseason. That's just undeniable. They know how to win when they get there. Uh, but I have the Dodgers winning the World Series. Oh, all right. How about that? I uh, I will take the Atlanta Braves over the Baltimore Orioles to win the World that? Series. Paulie, you want to make your homer pick? The smart pick, Moose, because that's my pick as well. <laughs> Yo, it's so I, I think they're the deepest team in baseball this year. Oh, really man. Uh, except they choke in the playoffs, unlike the Astros, who what? know how they to win have in done the playoffs. That in the past. Um, and I just lo- actually love sitting in here when the Astros are playing playoff baseball or the other uh, Braves are, pl- are playing playoff baseball while Paulie's sitting here just watching them implode. It's just the only time you get emotion out of Paul O'Neill is whenever the Astros, I keep saying Astros, when the Braves are just imploding in postseason baseball. All right, there's our picks. Sure to go wrong. Uh, don't bet on any of that, kids, because we're probably wrong with all of our stuff. Okay, it's after further review. Stay here. AFR. Brought to you by Glow Resources. I'm excited. Next week, I got a meeting over at Glow Resources. I think on Thursday morning, I'll be over at the office visiting with uh, Jareth and uh, Hillary. Great people over there. I'll take some pictures of the office as well and share them on social media. I tell you all the time, like if you haven't seen their office, I, it's they they did a gut renovation of a building right there on Perkins and Quail Oak, and it is gorgeous. Like You should just walk in and check it out. It's Glow Resources, G-L-O. I mean, to be quite honest, one of the reasons people love to work with Glow Resources is they're fun. Like, they're great people. They're like, like they're easy to get along with. And, man, they get results. A 93% retention rate with Glow Resources. When they place one of their employees at, in your business, 93% retention rate. As a matter of fact, if for whatever reason it doesn't work with the employee they hire, they will give you a prorated refund or... They'll place another employee for free. GLO, GlowResources.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Electricity is all around us and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net.
After further review with Matt Moscona. See where you stand on the leaderboard for the million dollar bracket challenge powered by Acura of Baton Rouge and Coors Light at 1045ESPN.com. First place wins $2,024 cash. Second place, a 75 inch TV and soundbar. Third place, it's a two night stay at the Beau Rivage. It's the million dollar bracket challenge powered by Acura of Baton Rouge and Coors Light. Panther signed Jadevian Clowney. Um, they gave him a two-year deal. Two years could be worth up to twenty-four. Two years, twenty million dollar deal with incentives could be worth up to twenty-four million dollars. Uh, um, I thought this was interesting for a couple of reasons. Well, obviously, it's it's noteworthy here because the Panthers are in the Saints division. So, that, I mean, that's one of the reasons why it obviously makes sense. Um, the Clowney. Uh, signing though, really just his uh, what's happened with Clowney the past uh, year is a, a pretty good comp for Chase Young. Not be, not that they're the same age or the same point of their careers or anything like that, but Clowney took a one year prove it deal with Baltimore. His deal last year with Baltimore, Baltimore was one year, two and a half million dollars. He's thirty one years old. And he went to Baltimore and had nine and a half sacks. Now, Baltimore's had great defenses for a long time, and Clowney fit in perfectly with it. So he had one year, nine and a half million dollars, and he parlayed that into a two-year, $20 million contract with incentives that could go up to $24 million. So that's kind of what you're hoping for from Chase Young. If Chase Young goes out there this year, 24 years old, 25 years old, and has you know, nine and a half sacks, then he's going to get a, a longer-term deal. That's the benefit of doing a a prove-it deal. You get a really motivated player that's going to go out there and and, and try to earn their next deal. Um, So that's my hope. That was one part of my reaction to the Clowney deal. It was interesting to me also that Clowney chose the Panthers because they're the worst team in football. And they're not going to win anything of significance this year. So you look at Clowney at this point in his career at 31 years old, former number one overall pick, and he's been with four different teams in the last five years. After you know, playing the first five seasons of his career at the Texans, four teams in five years, Seattle, Tennessee, Browns, and now Ravens, and now the Panthers. So it'll be five in six years as he's just become a sort of a, a, a edge rusher mercenary for hire. He's just bounced around the league, but finding his, his biggest payday. And the next is clearly going to be there in Carolina. But there's really two reasons why it makes sense for Clowney. One is is obviously the money. He's That's the best deal he was going to get. The Jets also showed interest. And in theory, that division where the Patriots are down, and yes, the Bills and the Dolphins are good, but the Jets, if Aaron Rodgers is back, could be a playoff contender, and you'd be in New York where you're a more marketable player. But it's just very clear what Clowney's doing here. He got a better, he got a better deal, got more money in Carolina, and Charlotte is like 30 minutes from his home. Uh, remember, he's from Rock Hill, South Carolina, so it's just south. It's like 25 minutes south of Charlotte, and he's an hour and a half away from Columbia where he played collegiately. So for Clowney, this is an opportunity to go home and to make more money. So uh, he's sacrificing the opportunity to potentially win to go where he's going to make more money and be closer to home. So Genevieve Clowney is um, is joining the Carolina Panthers. Of note to the Saints, obviously, they'll see him twice this year. But Carolina, I mean, they were the worst team in the NFL last year rushing the passer. They had an NFL low 27 sacks, the Panthers did, and then they traded Brian Burns to the Giants. So you're the worst team at rushing the passer, and you traded your best pass rusher, but they've loaded up. They signed DJ Wanham. They signed Caleb on Chasson in free agency as well. I don't know if y'all talked about that while I was out, but they signed Caleb on Chasson as well, so he goes from Jacksonville to Carolina, and now they've added Jadevi and Clowney. So they got numbers and got a lot of guys where there's a lot of draft capital at the time invested in, uh, in those three players, and they'll try to piecemeal together a pass rush, which they weren't able to do uh, a year ago. Jadevian Clowney headed to Carolina. All right, it's after further review. We're brought to you by our friends over at Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Of course, I love telling you about me and my partners over at Hudco for, for the last three years. I tell you every day, do business with someone you know. If you have or think you might have roof issues, give us a shout, commercial or residential. We'd love to help you out. Just give us a call, uh, 364-1007, 364-1007. I tell you all the time, that rings the office. I mean, Christina will probably answer the phone there at the office on Perkins Road. If she doesn't, it rings forward to cell phones as well. So you might get Tilly, you might get Terrio, you might get Joe Morales, but you're going to get somebody. You're going to talk to a person here in Baton Rouge. 364-1007.
Hudco Roofing and HudcoRoofing.com. Do business with someone you know. 364-1007. All right. Um, do you have any NFL music? I want some NFL music for this segment. So the um, speaking of Clowney and, and all the, uh, uh, the NFL projections, we've spent so much time talking about uh, the NFL draft, understandably. But what um, what has happened now since the uh, free agency period and different trades and all that sort of stuff, uh, you're starting to see NFL win totals adjusted as well. So I wanted to run through some of what we've seen change. There's definitely two things playing right now. Oh, that was like a, uh, a remix, a mashup. A fierce battle. Should we bring it back? I, that would actually be pretty cool. You still have it playing, whatever that was? No, I closed it out. Oh. You'd have to time it right, though, Muse. Like on beat. If you're going to do a mashup, you have to hit the beat. Right. right. Yeah, I, I mean... I don't I'm, trust you to do that. No, Especially I'm not, not at 441. DJ. Yeah. Even if you weren't an actual... Even if you were an actual DJ at 441, I don't think it'd work out well for you. You know why, Polly? What is that? Well, I mean, what do you think, Polly? It's 441. You got the little buzz going on. Yeah. That gummy's starting to hit a little bit, isn't it? Look at him sitting back in his chair over there. Just chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool. Shooting some b-ball outside of the school? No, eating weed gummies. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing over there, Muse? It's not the worst that break. song. I wasn't singing a song, Muse. You're hearing things. Not surprising, right, Polly? Not at all. <laughs> I don't know why I made you play this music. I like really. I just like to have production value sometimes. You talk, said you I, like this, I know, music. I know, I know. But I was looking at it. I'm like, well, it was interesting. As we've started to see uh, odds makers adjust win totals, who's going up and down, especially from a year ago. Um, all right, who do you think would be? I'll open this to either you. Who do you think would have the biggest? difference upward from a year ago meaning they're projected to win more games this year than they did a year ago the houston texans houston is the number one team at the plus four um from from a year ago houston texans and then there's three teams okay you can kill the music. that's <laughs> i mean it was a ah, it was the look i say it all the time i'll try things yeah man i'll always try there's strikes and there's gutters you hit you miss something whatever um, there are three teams that are projected to win three more games than they did a year ago. One of them should be obvious. Uh, I'm going to go with the Minnesota Vikings. No. Oh. I'll go with the Jets. No. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's a team that we all love to hate. That's Atlanta Falcons. Thank you. Kirk Cousins. Here we go. That'd be uh, Falcons, Baltimore, and Green Bay. All uh, three games over their projected win total from a year ago. Uh, the downward adjustments, Carolina, Denver, and New England, all three games off of a year ago. Carolina was picked, their over-under last year was seven and a half uh, before the season. It's it's a four and a half this year for, for Carolina. The number that we're obviously going to concern ourselves with is New Orleans. And the New Orleans Saints projected win total is at seven and a half, uh, the adjusted win total. Uh, last year you were you were at nine and a half, and you and you finished at at nine wins. So Vegas pegged the Saints a year ago. They had them over under nine and a half. They finished at not. Excuse me. They finished with nine wins. If the Saints, and again, projected win total here is seven and a half. So if you either go seven and ten or eight and nine, if the Saints finish a game on either side of that win total. At seven or eight wins. And they're sub-500 and missed the playoffs for a fifth consecutive year. Um, or a fourth consecutive year, excuse me. Uh, Dennis Allen is getting fired. You can't... It, it will be the Arthur Smith treatment. Arthur Smith was in Atlanta. Three seasons. Back to back to back. Seven and ten seasons. Never made the playoffs. You're fired. There's just not enough tolerance in the NFL. Even for patient ownership to go through that kind of stretch. You can't go from seven wins or uh, to nine wins to seven wins again and miss the playoffs three consecutive years, especially with the investment that, that they've made. So um, Saints projected win total. We'll see how this might adjust after the draft, but with 
Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, it has made them the prohibitive betting favorite in the division, which means the only way the Saints, if they don't win the division, get the playoffs, obviously, is a wild card, and that doesn't appear likely. But uh, just some of the adjustments there. How about no love for Sean Payton in Denver as well? Three games lower than a year ago. The the, the odds makers and everyone bought into the Russ-Sean Payton pairing a year ago. Well, now Russ is in Pittsburgh. We don't know who the quarterback is going to be for Denver, and Sean Payton's there. I think they're anticipating a pretty significant backslide for the Broncos. Okay, it's after further review. We're glad you're hanging out with us here. We'll knock out a break. Mincy's in 15 minutes. Moved him up from Friday because no show tomorrow for Good Friday. So Mincy will join us today. We'll talk some college baseball bets. We'll come back. We used to do Tigers and the Pros. Stick around. AFR. AFR is brought to you by Action Industries. Pretty excited, man. Get to get to hang out with my friends from Action Industries uh, on Wednesday at the Pels game. Going to head down for the Pels and, uh, and the Magic there in the blender. So excited to get to see that next week. But I tell you all the time, if um, if you're you know in one of those plants that has serviced our communities and means so much to our state and has for so long, you probably know about Action Industries. If you don't, you need to get to know Action Industries. If you're a project manager, a turnaround coordinator, maintenance manager, you need to get to know Action Industries because they've done work in those plants for more than 42 years. Their safety record beats the industry standard, and their quality of work is why Action Industries has been hired over and over and over again. And they also offer fabrication shop services. So if it's pipe, structural steel, pressure vessels, they do it all at Action Industries. You can check them out online. Official partner of LSU Athletics, it's Action Industries. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so
after further review with Matt Moscona. All right, wrapping up hour number two. Um, the lineup is out for LSU game one against Arkansas, and Javen Coleman is going to get the ball for the Tigers tonight against uh, against Arkansas. So it's Hagen Smith on the bump for the number one ranked Hogs. It'll be uh, Javen Coleman on the bump for LSU as the Tigers are pitching off. We talk plenty about it. Uh, Luke Coleman will, will stay on his Friday night uh, start, which will be um, tomorrow in game two, and then Gage Jump stays on Saturday. He'll pitch game three. So Javen Coleman gets the ball for the Tigers tonight. We'll talk plenty about the lineup and all that stuff as we get into hour number three. Right now, Muso, Tigers in the pros. Tigers in the pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. Opening day in Major League Baseball. That is where we start. And we start up in Cincinnati where Jake Fraley had a incredible first three innings for the Reds. So we'll start it off with a play in the field for Fraley. Uh, Line drive down the right field line. He ranges over, fields it on a backhand, all in one motion, fires a dart to second base, and nails the runner. It was one of those where it beat him by so much, the runner missed the bag. He came up short of the slide, and the guy was just waiting for him. An absolute cannon from Jake Fraley. He followed that up with an infield single, and then he would proceed to steal second base. And then in his next at bat, oh, I'm sorry, he'd score a run. And then in his next at bat, would hit a double of his own and then score another run. Fraley is two for three with two runs scored and a seed from the outfield. Really good start. Yeah, he's good. Same cannot be said so far yet for Alex Bregman, but we know he will pick it up. 0 for 3 so far for Bregman uh, in the game against the Yankees. The game's tied now, Matt, by the way, 4 to 4. I love baseball so much. Yeah, yeah. He's all of a sudden going to watch again. How about that? Can't wait to get home uh, and watch all the games. It's going to be so good. Uh, well, none of them are on TV, so you can't, you can't well, do, I do that. Have, well, I, and you know what? I'll tell you why well, I do have MLB TV, uh, but I don't get to watch Astros games. Yeah, they're blacked out here. It's so stupid. Because so when the Yankees play the Astros, I don't get to watch. Yep. yep I don't get to watch the Astros true. ever. It's stupid. It's pretty awful. Uh, Nas Reed, last night, 21 points to lead the Minnesota Timberwolves. Mm. He coupled that mm. with 10 rebounds. So a double-double for Nas and a mm. really nifty pass uh, there if you're watching the show. Just a quick little dime. Part of four assists for Nas. Shot mm. 50%. Woo! Just stayed. Okay. There was, was any anything you wanted to add there? Well, I thought you were stuck. No, 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 no. I no. get accused of interrupting you, Muse. Ah. I just wanted to make sure that uh, you know you said all the things you needed to say. All right, all right. Cam Thomas uh, played forty-five of forty-eight minutes last night for the Brooklyn Nets and scored thirty-eight points. Had a pretty wild and one as well in the uh, in the second quarter of the game. Contorts his body, throws it up off the window, it goes, lands back first and kind of smashes into the uh, base of the goal there. But uh, all part of a, a really solid night. Led the game. Uh, well, I'm sorry, it was tied with Jordan Poole for the game's leading score at 38. And added seven assists. God, really solid those night uniforms there. are atrocious. The Nets? Yeah. Yeah, they're terrible. They're awful. I, I, the Nets' colors being black and white in general are bad. And then whatever they're doing with that is just uh, really, really This is really, their really city tremendous. edition. Just bad. Not good. Not good. A lot of sh- looks like it's like uh, kind of like shapes, abstract, all over the off. Looks like um, it looks like the nineties. Like the the nineties are having a comeback. It's so weird. It's like in the nineties, um, logos were huge nope. and colors were bright. It was all like neons and fluorescents. Like, think about the Raptors' original uniforms. Like, the Spurs had a weird color scheme in the 90s where they had this, like, teal and pink thing going on. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, it's bad. The 90s were so bad for that stuff. And it's all coming back now, which is weird to see. It has to be how, like, my parents felt in the 90s or the aughts when, like, bell bottoms were coming back. They're like, really? Bell bottoms are a thing? Yeah, bell bottoms became a thing again. Well, remember with Last Dance? Everything comes back. Last Dance, everybody saw the uniforms were reminded. They're like, everybody should bring those back. And it's like, ah, there's a select few that were actually good. Last Dance? The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan doc. Oh! Everybody saw, like, the old, oh, it the old NBA the uniforms. uniforms. Yeah, they're oh, like, oh, everybody oh, should bring oh, them back. Oh, and it's like, oh, there's oh, actually oh. only a select few of those that were good. Yeah. And the Raptors were not one of them. But the Raptors are wearing those again. I know, but they're bad. They brought back the big old dinosaur. It's, it's ridiculous. 
It's funny, but it's not a good uniform. But everybody thought it was awesome at the time. I get it. I get it. Uh, do off Reef at 13 and 5. That's Tigers in the Press. Presented by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, LMFJ.com. LMFJ.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. They're the best gentlemen. If you're thinking of popping the question, go where our state is going to get engaged for more than 40 years. Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, where you always get the Lee Michaels experience. Or guys, if you want to throw something phenomenal in her Easter basket, it's not too late. You can get by Lee Michaels, pick up that beautiful piece of jewelry, put it in there. You know, something like the little fake hay, little fake, the little grass that you put in your, uh, not not your kind of grass music, the kind that you put in the Easter basket. Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Thrill her with a gift in the red box from Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. LMFJ.com. All right, y'all. Ben Min starts off hour number three. We get some college baseball picks for the weekend. Don't you move. It's AFR. AFR. All right. Busy hour number three. As we've got one more hour before we put a button on the weekend, but I always love telling you about Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Michelle.com. Michelle.com. M I C H E L L I. Michelle.com. Hey, I really encourage you, if you don't uh, yet, to go follow Michelle on LinkedIn. They put a ton of content on LinkedIn about so many of their uh, the, the vendors uh, that they work with, um, a lot of their customers when they're at different shows around the country. Um, great opportunity to see a lot of the examples of the work that they do. Like I saw this one earlier this week. It was you know, Michelle at um, the, uh, this was in Tennessee. They were at Southern California, Tennessee, and Mississippi this week at a variety of shows. They're just all over the place. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement. This one was at the World of Asphalt with BTEC in Nashville. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement online at Michelle.com, Michelle.com for more than 75 years. Michelle.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. It was a humid day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Like cypress stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after-hours emergency. The light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, 
Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana and their local. This is Sports Center. I'm Doug Brown. It's baseball's opening day stateside here on ESPN Radio. We'll have the reigning World Series champion Rangers hosting the Cubs with our coverage starting one hour from now. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred tells MLB Network's high heat with Chris Russo he's hoping for a quick resolution to the betting scandal investigation involving Shohei Otani's former interpreter. ESPN's Jessica Mendoza. Unless some sort of results investigation comes forward and Otani is not on the field, I don't think it's going to be a distraction. I do think the media is going to talk about it, and as information comes through, it'll be a distraction for the rest of us. Jess Mendoza on Greeny. It's still unclear if Otani's representatives have reported any stolen money to the authorities. Yankees right-hander Garrett Cole gets moved to the 60-day IL today. The reigning American League Cy Young winner has inflammation in his right elbow. The Sweet 16 tips off tonight in the NCAA tournament. UConn against San Diego State, Illinois, Iowa State, Arizona against Clemson, North Carolina plays Alabama. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Looking for a career you'll love with flexibility, great pay and benefits, and one of the country's top workplaces? Come join their growing team. Go to Progressive.com slash careers and apply online today. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Number three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR. I'm Matt. This is Jack O'Neill, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. You soon. And Mr. Toby Tom Play. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Five o'clock, Quentin time. Glad you are driving home with us. Uh, we're going to take the day off tomorrow. Our whole staff will have the day off on Friday to celebrate Easter with family and all. We'll look forward to being back on uh, on Monday. But one hour to go. We're fired up to have Mincy with us. She's usually with us on Fridays. We're doing this. Uh, Mincy at Barstools, a DraftKings partner, as are we. So uh, we're looking at the college baseball slate and giving you best bets uh, for the weekend with uh, Muse, uh, Mincy and I. Kind of going head to head, Mincy. How are you, man? Man, I'm doing well. Uh, the DraftKings people were actually in the Barstool office today, so it's cool uh, to get to meet them. And I actually talked to them and told them how much I love their college baseball lines, and uh, you know how I was like, it's just awesome because now you can bet the the run lines, the game. It's just come so far the last few years, and so I thought it was funny. It was on my mind today for sure. Mincy, are you wearing eye black? Yeah, so they had me uh, – today was opening day for the Yak, and so I had to wear cleats and eye black and all kinds of stuff, and I had to cook hot dogs for three hours for the Yak. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, my cooking skills are not the best, but uh, the hot dogs I ended up – that that I could actually do. So yeah. they uh, they ended up being fine, and, you know, and they've got a lot of funny clips as usual. So. Hot dogs but, yeah, are really just, are just – you just get boiling water, and you just drop you just drop the hot dog in there. Yeah, I was cooking them on like a pan with some butter, but it was fine. You know, I, I didn't screw them up. I didn't. I didn't screw them up too bad. Uh, you know, but it was really fun. And uh, man, what a sports day this is! Uh, you know, you got Major League Baseball opening day, Sweet Sixteen, and college baseball, yeah, SEC, man. all going on. I think this is one of the most underrated. You know, one of the better ones of the year today. Mincy, isn't this why the like we were talking about it earlier? There's one, one national baseball game today. National broadcast. It's the Cubs and the Rangers tonight. Like. We're in studio. We have no games on in studio. The yeah, Major League Baseball didn't know what the hell they're doing. It's stupid. They should have had something yesterday, too, when they, yeah. were, they were up against nothing. They should have had a standalone game <sighs> last night. And somebody brought this idea up. They need to start doing, like, a noon game and a 3 o'clock game every day during the week for on, like, MLB TV because people watch baseball at work in the afternoon. You know, they need yeah. – I don't know. I just feel like they don't do a good job with Oh, I mean, Mincy, you're 100 percent right. I mean, just the WGN with with day games with the Cubs. I mean, they've made they, this whole region 
there's Cubs fans because of the day games on WGN that kids when they're home from school would watch through the summer. I mean, I was one of them. I loved Ryan Sandberg, man. I loved the flip shades, 23. I thought it was so cool, man. A power hitting second baseman. It, all because we watch day games on WGN. I mean, there's uh, baseball just misses the mark tremendously. Um, yeah, no, no doubt. Cubs right. Rangers fun one other night. Rangers raising the banner, you know. So yeah, that, man. I mean, that is That'd be good, dude. What do you think about Wyatt Langford making the opening day roster? What's up? What do you think about Wyatt Langford making the opening day roster? Man, they think so. My guy who's real sharp at baseball, my producer, Tyler Moody, uh, he gave Langford out 8-1 to one to win Rookie of the Year. He had six home runs in spring training, and now he's like plus 250 to win Rookie of the Year. It's oh, crazy. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so he's probably going to hit in the sixth hole. Uh, they, man, he, high expectations for him in year one. Very. Look, it's, just, it's wild. It, anytime you see a rookie make the opening day roster, but a rookie making yeah. the opening day roster for the defending champions is is kind of stunning to see it. Like I could have believed Cruz, you know, would have would have uh, would have made the opening day roster or Skeens. I mean, they were you know phenomenal talents and going to teams that could you, know, you could use the help, you could justify playing it. Langford's a bit a bit surprised though in in Texas. Well, yeah, it's interesting now though uh, with Skeens and Cruz being on rebuilding teams, they've got that weird contract rule where if they hold them out for a couple months and bring them up, they don't lose a year of their rookie contract. And so all these teams have incentives to hold them back for a few months to where they can keep that extra year for the year six for arbitration. And so I think that they're probably dealing with that. But when the Rangers, you know, just won the World Series, they're not worried about any of that. They're trying to uh, trying to compete now. Because you and I both know Paul Skeens is, I mean, he's at least like a number two major league starter like already with stuff and location. Yeah. So you're right. But no, it's it's fascinating. Cubs did that with Chris Bryant years ago. Mm-hmm. But it's help. interesting, though, Matt, because college baseball, because now with the NIL and the major and minor league draft getting smaller, you know, I've said all the time, the SEC is like, what, low double A quality, something what? like that, double A. So you see these guys going from SEC quick to the majors because that's just how strong the competition is now in college. Yeah, I mean, see, the, the, what I've always heard from, um, from friends that are scouts is double A is like a Friday night in the SEC. So mm-hmm. what you would typically see on a Friday night in the SEC, that's what you're going to see on a given night in, in double-A ball, which is amazing to think of what we get treated to every week when we watch SEC baseball, which is crazy. So uh, with that, let's get to our picks. Hit us with a little music, if you would, there, Muse. Mincy's here. We're going to keep tally. We're going to give you three bets, best bets uh, for the night. Mince, Muse, and I. Um, Mincy, I told you last week I went just like these absurd money line plays. Like I, I took Texas minus 500 on the money line just so I didn't like lose all my games. The one game I lost was Texas on the money line <laughs> minus 500. Uh, Baylor yeah. beat them four to three and 11. So uh, I took that one on the chin, but I had Tennessee and also the under uh, BYU Texas Tech, which uh, which did hit under 13. So two and one. Muse, how did you do? Uh, I was two and one. Likewise, I had Kansas that hit, um, and then I right uh, had uh, excuse me I had Tulane and that hit. And Mince- yeah, you got me on that one. That two-lane ride. That's right. What's yeah. extra innings? Going head-to-head. Head. All right, Mincy, you did... Uh... 0-3, got smoked. All right, Ooh. Mincy was 0-3, but Mincy was 3-0 and the first week when we didn't count the standings, but officially moving forward now. All right, Mincy, you want to start us off, man? What you looking at? Yeah, I'm going with some of my strategy. I've said this all along. You know, my record may not be the best because I love taking these underdogs, but I'm starting with one. I'm taking Auburn plus 220 in College Station tonight. Okay. That's a ridiculous Ooh. price. A&M does not have, you know, A&M can really hit, but they don't have a little, like a Friday night ace guy. They don't have that ace to stop their pitches. They have to get plus 220. I mean, I'm not saying like Auburn's better than A&M, but that's a ridiculous price. So I'm going to I'm gonna take it. I'm yeah, that, call. That, that feels like a lot of value. Uh, yeah, pl- right at plus 220 at DraftKings. That's a 6 o'clock first pitch too, by the way. So if you're interested, that one starts here in 52 minutes. Muse, what's your first one? Yeah, I, I'm uh, also going the underdog route here. I'm going to fade your Texas Longhorns, Matt. I'm going to take, <laughs> take the Kansas State Wildcats, a home underdog at even money. All right. Uh, you said K-State? Yes. All right. Muse is going K-State. Money line. My first one, uh, I'm looking at a local team that's going on the road. I'm going to take the Cajuns. At, well, actually, it's the Cajuns, Texas State. I'm going to say under 12 and a half. Uh, I think something we've talked about is these Friday night, or in this case, Thursday night uh, games tend to be pitching and defense dominant. So I'll go under 12 and a half with uh, ULL and Texas State. All right, Mincy, what's your second one, man? The second pick, this is kind of uh, – I hope I don't get burned on this because – I'm actually taking Alabama minus 150 at home against South Carolina, even though Bama had a bad weekend last weekend and South Carolina had a good one. 
I still don't necessarily believe in South Carolina. I think Bama's in a bounce back spot, so I'm taking a minus 150. All right. All right. Muse, what's your second one? I like that play, Mincy. Uh, I'm also going to slam Marcos, Matt, but I'm not playing the total. I'm going to take Texas State minus 140. Saw so both those teams in Houston like Texas State more than the Cajuns. Uh, I'm going to stay on my under trend. I'm looking at the most inflated line, Cincy Baylor, especially after watching Baylor last week beat Texas 4-3 to and 11. I like Baylor to keep this one a low-scoring game. The number's 13 and a half, so I'll go Cincy Baylor under 13 and a half. All right, Mincy, what's your third one, man? The third one is an under, even though it's not a high one. Uh, Southern Miss usually has good pitching. Troy's pretty good, too. I'm going under 9.5, which is a pretty low total. But, uh, you know, you know how it is, man. Like I said, college baseball, you're into unders on Friday, overs on Sunday, you know, yeah. and sometimes you, you have to take some low numbers on Friday with the aces and you take some high numbers on Sunday. But uh, so I'm going, I'm going under 9.5 here. Yeah, min- minus 110 there, uh, under 9.5. Muse? Each of the two weeks we've done this, I've won with a road favorite. It's hard to win on the road in college baseball, but I'm going to go back to the well. We're going to take Texas Tech minus 125 on the road at UCF. All right, Texas okay. Tech minus – you said minus 125? Minus 125. Oh, yeah, there is. Um, uh, it's actually – I'm looking at it right now. It's minus 115. So you're actually getting a better price Darn right it. now. <laughs> no, no, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. I was looking at the wrong box. You're right. It is Texas Tech minus 125. Right. You're right. My apologies. All right, my third game. Oh, uh, no, go ahead, Mincy. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead, your third game. I was going to ask about all y'all. I had some LSU Arkansas thoughts. Yep, um, go ahead, your Real quick, just Lamar, Oklahoma. Uh, it's it's the biggest total on the board at 14. I'll take under 14 for Lamar and Oklahoma in this game tonight. Yeah, what you got, Mincy? I'm just curious. So I like LSU strategy, and I know it's kind of interesting mm. because they're doing kind of what everybody did against schemes last year. Yeah. Um, but – Man, Hagen Smith, you see, y'all see, seen him pitch yet this year? He's striking yeah. out like two guys an inning. Yeah, he struck out I look, He struck out six, 62 of the 106, I think it was. Of the 106 batters he's faced. It's an absurd number like that. I mean, he's averaging more than two strikeouts an inning. Um, it, it, that, that, that is Skeens-ish. Skeens-like, just as far as the, 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 the strikeout to innings pitched ratio. It's, it's insane. Um I, Mincy, I, I've said it today, man. I understand. I do understand the strategy. Like I understand what Jay Johnson is doing, and, and percentage wise, it's it's the right play. I mean, it's going to give you a, an advantage on the mound in games two and three. I just, God, I just hate conceding game one, and that's what they're doing, man. He's just he's saying we'll let it rip, see if we can maybe get through against H- Hagen Smith, which nobody has. But Mincy, I think the part of it too is. Luke Holman's been so good, and the Arkansas offense has struggled. I mean, what if you're in a a two to one ball game, a one to one ball game, when both starters exit? Like, can can your bullpen out pitch there? Like, can can Griffin Heron get you home, and you get a bloop and a blast? I mean, you just eliminate that possibility. Uh, I feel like. Yeah, I think it's also interesting though. Holman has been pitching on Friday nights, and this being a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series, you know, you kind of keep him in that rhythm too. I'm sure that's like a small part of it. No doubt. But I mean, if you're LSU, like, say you lose tonight, you win with Holman. You know, you got a good chance to win the rubber match. I mean, I hate to – I know exactly what you mean because as a competitor, you hate to ever yes. concede anything. But if LSU wins two out of three on the road against – I guess Arkansas is like number one right now. I mean, that would be a great weekend on the road in SEC. It's, so. It would be massive. And no doubt. And, like, and, I'm, I, I, and I'm, I'm agreeing. Like, it's, it is the right – you're right. I mean, it's, it is the right play. Like, it is – if you're looking at percentages, it's the it's the right strategic move because you're not trying to win a game. You're trying to win the weekend. And this is going to give you the best chance to win the weekend. I just... Uh, there's just the part of me that's like, you're just... Yeah. What what message are you sending your team when you say, oh, we're just yeah. conceding game one? You know, guys, we hope it's also out, we're probably not going to get it. It's also interesting. I mean, just, you know, LSU baseball, they're defending national champions, and Arkansas is minus, what, 200 or 210 today? I yeah. mean, you just never see LSU getting that kind of price as an underdog. It's just, that's wild to me, you know? Uh, he's on Twitter at Barstool Mincy. Y'all give him a follow. Uh, ben Mintz join us for usually Fridays here um, as we talk a little college baseball, but good enough to jump aboard a day early as we're off tomorrow. Hey, Mincy, happy Easter, man. Thanks for the, the Yeah, man, y'all got any thoughts today. on the basketball tonight? Any big thoughts on in the, in, uh, Sweet 16? I mean, I'm I'm kind of just following along with the Otter and his uh, band of merry handicappers. Uh, they seem to love <laughs> Iowa State, and uh, er, nobody's betting against, uh, against UConn. So I'm on Iowa State and UConn tonight. Okay, yeah, the one, the 
The, the only one I have a strong feel on is Houston tomorrow because I think Houston seniors, they're just going to bully Duke. Okay. I think that that's a tough matchup for Duke without physical and all the experience that Houston has, but that's the only one I have a strong opinion on. Mincy, good stuff, man. We'll do it again next week. Thanks. Yeah, thanks DraftKings for supporting college baseball. Y'all yeah, man. Easy. Awesome. Great DraftKings partner to Barstool is, uh, as are we. We appreciate our friends over at DraftKings. You can get all those, download the DraftKings app and get all those lines there, make all the bets there. All right, it is after further review. Well, I got a quick break. Stay here. AFR. Brought to you by the Watermark Hotel and the Renaissance Hotel, two amazing hotel properties. One of the things I love telling you about so much, of course, is evenings at the Renaissance, which is their great... Um, a series that they're doing of fun nights with different spirits and cocktails and distilleries featuring a lot of different brands, which is so cool. But most importantly, man, just even if you don't want to wait and go to one of those types of events, just go have dinner at Tallulah inside the Renaissance. Just call ahead, get a reservation, have dinner there. Or just pop in, sit at the bar, or grab your cocktail, go out to the terrace, which is awesome. I mean, there's just comfortable outdoor seating on the terrace. There's this gorgeous uh, semicircle fire pit uh, fire fountain, I should say, actually, with the tall uh, tall top uh, bar stools. It's just a great ambiance and vibe. The food is amazing at Tallulah. Go check out the Renaissance if you haven't done it yet. Yes, look, if you got family coming to town, it's an awesome place to stay. They can always host whatever event that you need. That's fantastic for that as well. But check out Tallulah inside of the Renaissance Hotel right there on Blue Bonnet. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $22,500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $22,500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online. After further review with Matt Moscona.
good, man. Hope everybody has an awesome Easter. Um, good weekend. And maybe if you get some time off, you have a long weekend. I know a lot of the kiddos have uh, spring break next week. So if you're getting some time off, enjoy, man. Enjoy family. Hope everybody just has a has a, an awesome day and an awesome weekend. Weather should be good. I mean, I think, I think I saw Sunday. It's supposed to get up to like 87 degrees. So it's actually going to feel like like spring. Hell yeah. I know. Like, yeah. Can we pump this? It's like... I get up, I go work out early in the mornings, like before the sun's up. And this week, it, there was one day it was 42. Yeah, no thanks. Like, y'all, it's almost April. I don't, I don't need 42 degrees in my life anymore. There's a reason I live in Louisiana. It's so I don't have to mess with 42 degrees in April. Like, it's opening day for Major League Baseball, so I was thinking about this. I, I've to, I know I've told this story before, but I went to opening day at Wrigley. Um, and, uh, 2001 or 2002 and it, it wasn't opening day of the major league season because the Cubs start on the road it was just opening day at Wrigley my brother was at, at Notre Dame and I, I just took took a train over from South Bend to to Chicago it's like an hour train ride and uh to catch opening day at Wrigley it, it was snowing it, it was snowing and like I was wearing a giant jacket and gloves and all I could do was try to drink as much beer as possible to to forget that it was snowing and freezing on opening day. It's just there's a reason I live here. I, I don't want to I don't want to deal with that. Uh, the year I lived in South Bend, we got our first snow in October and our last snow in May. It snowed in May. No thanks. I mean that just that's that sounds like literally the worst place on earth. All I needed was one year. I'm like done. It's like. Hey, Mike Denbrock. You sure? <laughs> you, you sure? Sure, sure. Uh, anyway. All right. Uh, it's after further review. Thanks for being here with us. The um saw this earlier today. Um, CBS Sports took a stab at um The 16 teams with the best uh, chances of making the college football playoff this year. Now, keep in mind, it's not a 16-team playoff, right? We know it's going to be a 14-team playoff. But they looked at at the 16 teams that could make the um, the, the 12. I think it's a 14. I'm sorry, the, the 12 team, the expanded field of 12, the 12. Um, and. There was a couple of things that stood out to me, and I think maybe this exercise was just interesting because it's the first time I've really consider it, uh, considered it with the understanding of like the auto bids, um, you know, for your your conference champion, and the auto bid for the the, the G five representative, and then your at large spots. So, like, some of these aren't going to be a surprise. And, and by the way, like, this isn't. Um, this isn't Vegas odds, or it's just their opinion at CBS Sports looking at okay, based on the new rules, right of of how the the bid allocation is going to work, and teams with what they have returning and their schedule and all that sort of stuff. Like, keep in mind, somebody from this new look Big Twelve is going to get an auto bid to the playoff, like some like. Colorado and Arizona and Arizona State and Utah, like going into the Big 12, like somebody's going to win that league and get an auto bid. Um, you know, Texas and Oklahoma aren't going to be there anymore. They're going to be in the SEC, so it changes that whole dynamic. So it's interesting. Anyway, so here, here I'll just run through the 16 teams. Georgia, they had at, at the top. I don't think that's going to be a surprise to anybody. Uh, Georgia, Ohio State, Utah. Utah with the third best odds. Again, remember, Utah in the new Big 12 with Cam Rising coming back from an injury as a super senior. You don't have to go through Texas or Oklahoma. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Like you, I don't think many people would look and go, man, Utah is going to make the playoff. That's one of my top three uh, like best odds. But it kind of makes sense because they got a great shot. They've been such a, a, a consistent program in the Pac-12. Now they move into the Big 12 without Texas and Oklahoma, and you go, yeah, Utah makes sense. Uh, they've got Clemson at four. And remember, Clemson now, with, with Florida State having... Florida, last year was Florida State's year. 
because all those dudes that came back are gone. Jordan Travis is gone and Keon Coleman and now Braden Fisk and Jared Verse. Like Florida State just got gutted from that great team. So Clemson with Cade Klubnick is the team that makes the most sense in that ACC. And remember, you've got like Cal and Stanford joining the ACC now as well. It's weird that that's going to be expanded, but I mean, who's your biggest challenge? Louisville? Miami? It, it makes sense. Like someone's getting an auto bid into this playoff. The G5 auto bid? Liberty. They, I mean, that, yes. I mean, they're going to run the table in Conference USA and they're going to be, uh, they're, they're going to be very likely the G5. So because they're getting an auto bid, that's the fifth, they, they put it as number five on this list. Uh, again, CBS Sports listing that the 16 teams most likely with the best opportunity to earn a bid into the, the new expanded 12-team college football playoff. So six is Oregon, even with Bo Nix gone. And now they're going in the Big Ten. That one caught me off guard a little bit. Seven is Notre Dame, followed by Texas, Ole Miss, Penn State. Eleven is Alabama. And I think that caught my eye just because when was the last time we saw a list of like playoff teams and Alabama was 11th? I mean, usually it's Georgia, Bama, Ohio State. Bama, Ohio State, Georgia. Ohio State, Georgia, Bama, whatever. To see Bama down at 11 tells you, like, yeah, I mean, they may still make a 12-team expanded 12-team playoff, but it ain't what it was, and we all know that. Missouri at 12, defending champ Michigan at 13. Arizona, again, another team into that new look, Big 12. Oklahoma State at 15, Again, in that Big 12 without Texas and Oklahoma, and then they have Oklahoma at 16. So the 16 teams with maybe the best chance of earning a, a spot in a new 12-team playoff. Again, real quickly, Georgia, Ohio State, Utah, Clemson, Liberty, Oregon, Notre Dame, Texas, Ole Miss, Penn State, Alabama, Missouri, Michigan, Arizona, Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma. So you noticed no LSU on that list. And you and the the weird part of it, is do I think LSU has a great chance to finish this season as one of the top 16 teams in college football? Yes, I do. But remember the way th this is who's got the best chance of making a playoff, making the 12 team playoff. Well, you see so many Big 12 teams in there because somebody in the Big 12 is going to earn an auto bid. And while it's very likely, I think we would all assume Utah right now, how do you discredit Arizona or Oklahoma State at this point? Because if they're going to be good teams in a lesser league and they have a chance to win it, then yeah, then they're going to be on the precipice of, of an at-large bid. When you look at a team like LSU, you still have to play Bama and Ole Miss, like the same teams that you had to go through this past year. So... It, it, Oklahoma rotates on your schedule. In theory, you could end up in an SEC championship game. So it, it's just more challenging when you're looking up at Georgia and Bama and Ole Miss and Missouri. I don't know that Missouri is going to follow up the season they had a year ago, by the way, just as a random aside. Um, Texas in the league now as well. Oklahoma in the league now as well. I don't think Oklahoma is going to be on the door. I think Oklahoma is going to have a tough, a tough transition. But anyway... Um, it's six SEC teams and Bama down at number 11 on this list, which uh, which was striking to see. I think part of the reason I wanted to talk about this today is it, not just to like read someone else's list, which struck me is like it's going to force me, I think in all of us, to recalibrate how we look at college football, right? Because when we would look at, okay, who's got the best chance to make a four-team playoff in the past, we were looking at this really concentrated small group of teams of, who do we think could go undefeated or have one loss? Like that was the conversation. Well, now the list is expanded. It's not just who's going to go undefeated or have one loss. Those are the givens. That's the Georgia, the Ohio State, like at the top of the list. It's who's going to win their league? Because every Power 5 conference champion or Power 4 conference champion now and the G5 representative get an auto bid. So in some respect, that's kind of like a, a bid stealer. Yeah, in the past... The highest-ranked G5 got a New Year's Six bid, but now you're talking about taking one of 12 precious playoff spots. And that's a very, very different feel, which could 
essentially steal a spot from someone who is a top 10 or 12 team in the country that just isn't their conference champion. You're the third best SEC team, but you're not getting a bid because of the, the bid steal that's going to go on from a, a crummy Big 12 or a, you know, a, a, a G5 or a two-loss ACC champion that's going to get it. So it's just all about, it's almost like, remember when the NFL went to 17 games and we had to get used to saying 10 and 7 instead of 10 and 6? Like we all knew in our brain 9 and 7 meant you were going to be like right on the borderline maybe of a wild card spot. Well, is 9 and 7 more like 9 and 8? Or is 9 and 7 more like 10 and 7? It was just going to take recalibrating our brain and how we looked at different records and schedules and stuff. And it's going to be the same now with a 12-team college football playoff that the way we look at at records and schedules and probabilities, it's all going to change because the postseason and the, and the desire and that the end game has all changed as well. So it was an interesting look as it all played out. Utah was the one that caught my eye. Utah is the one that really... I mean, because they, they gave Utah the third best odds of making the college football playoff. you And you wouldn't think it. But when you spell it out like that, it makes a ton of sense, man. The Big 12 is going to get an auto bid. Cam Rising's back for as a as a super senior for his sixth year, you know, coming off the ACL injury. If you're Utah and you go win a, a Big 12 where you don't have to clear uh, 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 Texas and Oklahoma, you're in the playoff. It's a, a really good chance that happens. Okay, um... It's after further review, brought to you by South Point Volkswagen, southpointvw.com. We're 29 minutes away from first pitch of LSU and Arkansas. Lineups posted. I'll run through it here in a second. Love telling you about South Point Volkswagen. Airline just north of Highland, southpointvw.com, southpointvw.com. Man, uh, I, I have loved driving my Atlas Crossport. I had the Atlas before. Three rows, seven-seater family SUV. That's what Erica drives as well, and it's great. It's tons of room in the back. It's as much room, actually more room, than the the full size SUV she used to drive an, another brand before she got the the Atlas, um, more room actually if you measure it all out more storage space fun to drive and all but I drive the Crossport because I didn't need the third row she took out the third row little shorter on the back sleeker design still all the style feel performance the luxury without the cost it's at South Point Volkswagen Louisiana's largest volume Volkswagen dealer South Point Volkswagen SouthPointVW.com South Point Volkswagen What's your direction? Okay, um, quick break. When we come back, we'll run through the starting lineup tonight for LSU against our Kansas as uh, the Tigers and the Hogs will tangle. It's on ESPN2, by the way. It's a nationally televised game on ESPN2. But, of course, you can listen on our sister station, Eagle 98.1 and the LSU Sports Radio Network. Quick break. We'll delve into LSU and our Kansas, the starting lineup, when we come back next on AFR. AFR. Just mentioned, uh, of course, Easter is on Sunday. And this happened uh, two, three years ago. We were at our family crawfish boil for Easter. We got home from the crawfish boil, and our AC was out. The house was hot. Called, it was about 5.30 in the evening. Called River City's one-hour air thinking, let me just call them so I get front of the line for tomorrow when they're back in the office so we can get somebody out here. Spoke to a human on the phone at their office on Market Street in Baton Rouge, had a technician at my house after 6 p.m. on Easter Sunday, fixed our AC. That's their commitment. Look for the big yellow vans and trucks with the giant clock on the side. You see them all over town. Nights, holidays, weekends, they always work and they never charge you extra to come out. It's River City's One Hour Air, 752 one Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. 
I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you, our mobile banking app. After further review with Matt Moscona. I'll oh, get to Otter Locks in about 10 minutes from right now. Hey, bro. Sorry. Uh, I was on the wrong segment there. He was ready to go. Oh, um, yeah. You just called Otter in the break, and then he played the, 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 the last uh, segment music coming. I was like, bro, yeah. we got another segment to go. <laughs> We're in the parking lot right now, man. The brownies are hitting, huh, Paul? Oh, come on. Come on. That, you, you left yourself wide open with that one. You took an extra one today. Oh. <laughs> no, it's in your Easter basket. Mars bar? Laced with THC. Whoa. Hey. Got him. All right, we got the starting lineup for tonight. Game one, LSU and our Kansas first pitch about 22 minutes from right now when it'll be Hagan Smith for Arkansas. And it'll be Javen Coleman for LSU. Tigers are going to pitch off. Um, they'll save a Luke Coleman and, and, um, and Gage Jump in the regular Friday, Saturday uh, spots. Again, we've talked about it a lot throughout the show today. Percentage-wise, it's the thing that gives LSU the best chance. It's just a little tough to stomach. Like, you're... you're you're, in in essence, conceding this game against Hagen Smith. And look, you didn't have a lot of success. Hagen Smith went toe-to-toe -to -toe last year with Paul Skeens on that Friday in Baton Rouge. Um, Skeens left the game and you ended up losing it in extras. Um, I, I kind of don't really count the the SEC tournament game. Uh, LSU didn't need that SEC tournament. Skeens didn't really extend in that game. It was I think we all recognize what that was. But Hagen Smith is awesome. Um, so here's how LSU is going to line it up tonight. Uh, against Arkansas there at uh, at Baumwalker. Ethan Fry back in the lineup. He's going to lead off. He'll DH and lead off. And look, I mean, I like, as I've said this, I like the bottom third of the order. The bottom third is Bingham, Kling, Milam. Those three guys, it, look, Kling ain't threatening to be at the top of the lineup. I know he, he, he's been there before in his career, but he don't need to be there now. We understand. But you're taking guys that are role players and trying to make them star players. And I think Bingham and Milam aren't going to be that. They're not going to be that right now anyway. 
So I like having Bingham Kling Milam in the bottom third of your order. The problem is you don't really have a table setter. Um, and they're trying to get Ethan Fry to be that guy. But if you're going to DH Ethan Fry, that means you're going to catch Hayden Travinsky because you've got to have Travinsky's bat in the lineup. So um, this is how they're going to line it up tonight. So Fry is going to lead up, uh, uh, lead off and DH. Pearson will bat second and play right. I love that too, by the way, instead of having Brady Neal and right. That's just a it's a it's a defensive liability having Brady Neal and right. So give me Pearson and right. Tommy White playing third, batting third. Travinsky batting cleanup. He's catching. Jared Jones in the five hole playing first base. And then Braswell batting sixth and playing short. Then the bottom third of your order, as we mentioned, is Bingham, Kling, and Milam batting ninth and playing second. So Fry, Pearson, White. Travinsky, Jones, Braswell, Bingham, Kling, Milam is how LSU is going to line it up tonight uh, against uh, against Hagen Smith. Uh, I just don't know. I just don't know that you have a better option. Um, you know the. You could, you could just decide to go pitching and defense, and and you could catch Malazzo, and obviously you have you have Kling in center. You keep your middle infield in play with Braswell at short, Milam at second. But that means Travinsky would have to to DH, and Fry would come out of the lineup. Everything else there, I like. I mean, I think they've they've maintained that. I think you do have your Pearson and right. Bingham in left, Kling in center. I think that is your best defensive lineup, save the catcher position. But you have to have Travinsky's bat in the lineup. And, you know, in a game like this, you're you're probably not going to have some big uprising against Hagen Smith. Your best opportunity is going to be a bloop and a blast. So what gives you the best, or who gives you the best opportunity to have a man on base when you get to White Travinsky Jones. And Ethan Fry, who you know, led off the other night, went 0 for 4, had a strikeout, did have a walk. Pearson, who has been big for you in it was in the postseason last year, is coming in big spots and is has been he's been on the stage, I guess is my point. So you're you're going with with more veterans, guys who've been on that stage. Fry and Pearson try to get on base for White or White get on base for Travinsky. Yeah, I mean, I, I I just don't know that you have a better option at this point with the way that it, it all shape, it shapes up. And Braswell, Bingham, Kling, Milam in the 6 through 9 hole right there. Against Hagen Smith, if you get any kind of production out of the bottom of your order, awesome, awesome. But I'd, I'd be surprised if we see it. Um you know, Jay Johnson talked about um, the offense going into this. Was all this morning, by the way, on off the bench. Talked about the offense going into this Arkansas series, where they're they're really looking, hoping to turn the corner. I think the fact that we're starting to hit some more home runs again, I think that helps. I think it's just kind of those at bats between the homers thing that we talk about and making it difficult. And we've done a great job for the first three innings of the game. And then we just, we can't let the guys settle in. Even on Tuesday, we had a little bit of a struggle with that. And so I think it's a capable lineup. There's some things like we've learned that, you know, for the future, like we can tweak a little bit, which we will, but further now, we just got to make it as hard as possible. And then you need one of those big, strong guys that we have to pop one out when you need to. And you need to get that one hit, you know, in the middle of the game that, you know, allows you to cash in when you get the guy on the ropes. But we did that last Friday night and we won the game. We've been a blast. Like, that's that's going to be your opportunity tonight against Hagen Smith. Uh, speaking of which, Dave Van Horn was asked about not only Smith this weekend against LSU, but but changing the rotation where they're going to move. If you haven't heard yet, they're moving. Uh, obviously, Hagen Smith is going to pitch tonight who's their Friday night guy. They're taking Molina, who's their Sunday guy, and moving him into the the game two role. And Brady Tiger is is staying on Saturday, but he'll pitch third this weekend. What we expect is him to go out and compete like he always does and hopefully, you know, get us into the game and late into the game uh, because that's what he's been doing. He's been throwing a lot of strikes. He competes hard and 
these give us an opportunity. We didn't give much run support last weekend. You know, as far as the rotation, uh, we're going to change it up just a little bit. We're going to go Smith, uh, Molina, and Tigered in that order. Just want to give Brady another day uh, to get right. So uh, that's kind of where we're going to do it. So if it, you can hear the trepidation there, or the hesitation maybe is a better way to say it from Dave Van Horn, and their biggest question there is on Tiger. And if you get a great performance from Gage Jump on Saturday, in theory, like that should be an, an, an edge to LSU. So what Jay's thinking is, look, let's, what, what gives us the best chance to split the first two games and then go into game three where we got Gage Jump and they got Brady Tiger and let the chips fall where they may. So um, I've, I've said it a hundred times today. I know I'm being repetitive. It's, it's the thing. It is the thing that statistically gives you. It's the strategy that gives you the best chance to win the weekend. It's not going to give you the best chance to win the game tonight. So look, I don't want people flooding my Twitter in the text line tonight if LSU loses this game, talking about how much they stink. If, if Hagen Smith goes and handcuffs his team, you got to understand – that's the best pitcher in college baseball this year. He's doing that to everybody. Jay is is approaching this saying, how do we win the weekend, not this game? I mean, Arkansas is minus 200 on the money line. They are a heavy favorite in this ballgame tonight. Let's, but it's baseball. It's one of the great things about baseball. So you can go swing a hot stick and uh, maybe find a way to scratch out this win tonight. All right, it's after further review. We're brought to you by the Williamson Eye Center, 924-2020. 924-2020. If you want to see 2020, Call 924-2020. Uh, it'll take you a little while before you get Dr. Blake in the office, though. I mentioned he's uh, he's in Paris. <laughs> so cool to see it on social media. Uh, Dr. Blake Williams is, is in Paris learning from one of the foremost ophthalmologists in the world, uh, trade secrets and all that good stuff. And we appreciate Dr. Blake for all the great work that he's done for so many in our community. And certainly, I'm in that number. I did my LASIK more than five years ago today. Uh, and I, I trust him like so many of you do because of things like this, working with um, uh, surgeon uh, Dr. Uh, Damien uh, Gatinel, um, a professor and surgeon uh, op ophthalmologist there in Paris. So you can check out their social media. You can see the photo uh, of the two of them there from earlier this week. It's uh, the Williamson Eye Center, 924-2020, 924-2020, or williamsoneye.com. Okay, uh, final break of the show. We'll come back. Jimmy will be here. We'll get some Otter locks. Uh, Otter gave us two plays yesterday for the Sweet 16. He gave us Iowa State, and he gave us UConn, if you haven't already played those. But we'll see what else the Otter likes this weekend. We'll get to that uh, next with Otter Locks. we wrap up the show on AFR. AFR. Yo, know, Easter is on Sunday. You know that. A lot of you have the day off tomorrow. Maybe uh, spend some time Saturday. Get in the house in the outdoor area ready for your guests or just because, you know, it's time. The weather's getting beautiful, sunny, a little warm, spring in the air. Just plan something, y'all. They got full greenhouses over at Clegg's Nursery so you can get by any of the four locations. Segan, near Airline, LA 16 in Denham, Mid City on Donmore, and the Garden Center on Greenwell Springs. Get by any of the four locations. If you need sod, they got it, bag or bulk. If you need mulch, they got it, bag or bulk. If you need weed and feed to treat your lawn, they've got it. Anything you need for your lawn, your garden, Clegg's Nursery. Johnny Naylor Seeds, Clegg's Nursery. You want garden decor, outdoor mats, Wind chimes, tune wind chimes, bird feeders. Time to enjoy your outdoor area. Clegg's can help. Buy local, shop local. Clegg's Nursery. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans.
Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we deliver. After further review with Matt Moscona. Down with Judge, we come final segment here on a Thursday edition of AFR. One thing left to do, let's find out what we're betting on tonight. Time for Otter Locks. Otter Locks, presented by Lofton Staffing Services. At Lofton, we put people to work. Call us today at 924-0200 or go to lofton.jobs. So we turn to the one and only, the incomparable and often incomprehensible, the Ott father himself, Jimmy Ott. Otter, how are you? Gosh, you can't make the first round at home, Astros. <laughs> ah. Happy opening day. Uh, How you doing? <laughs> the voice of a man who does not care about the Astros, but most certainly has money. The Yankees took the lead. Yes, they took the lead, but we had oh, oh yeah, he's out. But uh, first and second, nobody out. Uh, Astros down to bottom of the ninth. Papa. Single to right, they don't, they don't punt. You can't make the first out at home. Just fake your base loaded, nobody out. But no, uh, Soto throws them out at home. First awesome. and second. Out, so. Awesome. There you go. There you go. Awesome. All right, All what right. we got? Run the games now for me, sir. Where are we at? We got Clemson. They playing tonight? We got them. All right, Clemson plus seven. Seven and a half, seven, seven and a half. All right. Um, uh, our, uh, Charlie and I, uh, Charlie and I, actually doing our shows for LSU USC at Stadium Swim at a Cabana. By the way, so oh nice, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. The Thursday, Friday, Monday show for Labor Day weekend. But anyway, uh, both of us need to hit the hit the gym a little bit. But anyway, um, <laughs> the uh, the uh, the sports book manager uh, Nick McDonavich, you know, told me he says. Arizona's been overpriced all year. The, the, the betting public loves them. And look, when, they, when they're hitting their A game, they're really good. But they've lost way too many games this year. So I'm, I'm really a big believer in Clemson. Um, P.J. Hall, their best player, he's going to be drafted in the first round. Uh, 6'10", 6'11", interchangeable guy, can hit threes, can rebound, and score. Great free throw shooter for a big guy. But he, um, they won him only playing 19 minutes against Baylor. So they have the best two wins in the tournament so far. That's a lot of points. I think it's going to be very, very tight. Going okay. Clemson points to points there. Okay. We told UConn minus 11 yesterday. They're up to 12 now. Yep. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, you, your listeners got down yesterday. It's pretty much 12 everywhere. But we're already on that one. Bama, North Carolina, I'm kind of staying away, Matt. Okay. I think Claire, Carolina is the favorite here. But that was a very curious line Saturday when Carolina was only three and a half against Michigan State. They got crushed on that. And then they're going to open up a soft line again against Alabama. They're getting hit hard again, but Vegas ain't in the business of just giving money away. That's just One minute remaining. And then, the, and then the last game tonight is my favorite, and that's Iowa State. We gave that one yesterday. 
at minus one. So it's still at one and a half. But love, I'll take uh, number one efficiency defense against the number one offensive efficiency, and uh, the in Illinois. But Illinois just Purdue in the Big Ten tournament. They yeah. played Duquesne last week. Who did they beat? Northwestern the last ten games. You know, Shannon's playing as good as anybody, but damn, play somebody. All right, Clemson plus the seven and the the two that Otter gave out last night. UConn, which we got at 11, it's a 12 now, and Iowa State uh, laying one. Otter, you and Hanny doing shows tomorrow at Rafino's? Yes, yes, yes. At Rafino's, only local show. Final Yankees 5, Astros 4. Yeah, I love baseball! (laughs) (laughs) See ya, Otter. All right, that'll do it for us. Muse Polly, thanks. Y'all have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. AFR. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Bayou Ford has 7,500 off MSRP on new 23 Ford F-150 XLT trucks. 7,500 off plus 1.9% financing for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. It was a humid day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip. Like cyber stumps, your roots are planted deep inside.